and big cells. How you doing? Yeah. How are you doing on a football Friday and maybe the most important game of the year for the Eagles? How about this one? This is the third most important game. Fourth most important game in Jalen Hurts' career. The first playoff game versus Brady is won. The NFC Championship, the Super Bowl, and this one. If you feel froggy, you can add the Niner game. But would we be correct? Those are... The biggest games in his career, right? This is a big one. This is one of those defining games. Do you know what a game like this does? It validates who he's beat this year, his MVP race. It kind of wipes some of the stink off that Niner game. And by the way, that'll be back in the mind. Always remember this, though. So the Eagles dropped that game. They won the NFC title game against them and killed their quarterback. Oh, you got us in the regular season? Congratulations to you. This, I, I, hey, senor, maybe I should redefine that. Maybe all the Cowboy games this year are important to his career and how we look at him and how people outside the Philly area look at him. And listen, don't go to the low-hanging fruit. I don't give a shit what anybody around the country thinks of him. Yes, you do. Because you want the kid to get the respect that he's earned. Yes, you do. I would want respect. Now, look, his peers, do they respect Jalen Hurts? Of course they do. Do people in Philly? Of course they do. Does the NFL? I don't know. How about the freaking NFL start to respect him? You know what I'm saying? That's what these kind of games do. Because you know what you do? You start knocking all these bowling pins down. And there's just nothing left to shit on the kid for. How you doing, Twiz? Twiz got that Niner logo up, man. <laughs> Has to be a lost bet. Because that dude ain't putting a Niner logo up. <laughs> Boza figured out the blueprint. If I was Nick Boza, I would shut my fucking mouth. Are you kidding me? Eight quarters of football and you've been owned in all eight in the last two years. You might want to shut up, kid. Jalen Hurt. I think there's some truth to what he's saying, bad messenger. If you want to throw Fred Warner at me and he's barking, Fred ain't going to bark like that. You know why Nick is barking? Because he got destroyed. Okay? This guy talks like... You ever notice the guys who get killed against the Eagles talk the most? Michael Parsons, Nick Bozum. All the guys that get killed by Lane have to go out and make some kind of preposterous statement. Hey, Nick, of all the four... Get this. If I were to rank... The 49er guys who played great in that game Sunday, he wouldn't be in the top 10. I could probably give you 10 guys that played better than him. Shit, Greenlaw played better. Warner played better. Ayuk played better. Debo played better. Kittle played better. Trent Williams played better. Their two corners played better. Shit, their safeties played better. Where are you, Nick? Shit, Ar Hardgrave played better. Where were you? <laughs> yeah, it hurts, man. He feels the blitz. I don't think there's anything wrong with what he said. But he's the wrong messenger. Big Dob played better. Okay. <laughs> Big Dob played better than Nick Boza. That's funny. By the way, I got to say this, man. It's been a weird Eagle Cowboy week. That 49er shellacking, one of my grandfather's favorite words, shellacking. Um, 
really put a stink on Eagle Cowboy Week, did it not? Right? <laughs> right, I mean, put a pretty big stink on it. Wouldn't you say? I mean, here we are. Now we're ready. Uh, gee, just in the nick of time, it's football Friday. Thank you very little, but hey. And as I told you yesterday, this is going to be interesting. You know, I have gone back and forth on who I'm taking Sunday. I really have. I've gone back and forth. Oh, by the way, before we get into it and who I'm taking Sunday, the segment with my friend Tone will join us at 3.30. The greatness of Philly Godfather. Woo, what a big segment this is going to be. Eagle Cowboy Week, that'll be 5.30. And you, throughout the day, we appreciate that over the next couple hours here. Don't forget, on Saturday, from 3.30 to 5.30, Big Seals will be in King of Prussia. Yes. Flight's all taken care of. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'll be there tomorrow. Bunch of people are showing up. We got Eagle tickets to give away for Christmas Day. Merchandise. I hope you stop by 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern time. That'll be in King of Prussia Hooters. Yes, sir, baby. Okay. Looking forward to it. Went to Hooters last night. Fantastic. Dallas Godfather. Okay. All right. Give me, before I get into my takes. For Sunday. Let's see what you guys think. Just give me off the top here some scores for Sunday. What do you think? Sunday. High scoring, low scoring. Cowboys are favored by three and a half. And I think the number is 51 and a half. 30, 24 birds. 38 21 birds Philly 45 Dallas 28 fairy godmother was right last week Eagles 34 Cowboys 30 look at this here's the big question do we not agree do the Cowboys step up and do the e Eagles rebound Who would you rather be, a team that's not known for stepping up? Or a team, is there any, watch this, do you have question about this team rebounding this week? I don't really have any question about them rebounding mentally. I still have questions about them rebounding physically. Eagles 33, Dallas 30. 50 to 47 Dallas. High scoring, you think? Why why is Boza talking shit about Hurts? Because everyone does. Haven't, haven't I guys? It's funny. I say it, people do it. And then you come back to Sills and you go, You you were right. Very few people in the league respect the guy. I guarantee you this. All the big-time defensive guys don't respect Jalen Hurts because they don't think he can read def offenses or defenses. They don't think he can. I've been telling you that since day one. It's not the way the offense is set up to be a progression reading. Or, You know, that's funny. I never thought about that. You know, when you take the RPO out, he has to be more of a progression reader. And maybe that's why he's missed a ton of throws this year. And what I say, a ton of throws, wide open dudes. Interesting. Dallas wins by two scores. Okay. Big Sills pick Eagles and Cowboys. Will the Cowboys step up? And will the Eagles, Eagles respond? As we said, the numbers are three and a half. Cowboys are favored. It's 51 and a half total number. 24-25 kind of ball game somewhere in there. 
like that. That's what they're looking at. Um, Cowboys, they entered a ball game. Passing yards, 263, they're third in the league. Rushing yards, 117 or 11th. Combine that, that's pretty good. Points scored, they're first, 32-3, and they're great at home. Defense, passing yards, 181 against, it's fifth. Rushing, 12th, 106. Cowboys show Carter in, De- in December, then Stormy Daniels. Points allowed, 18-3, they're fourth. Dallas is 8-4 and four against the spread this year. Here are your birds. Passing yards, 235.7. They're 13th in passing. That number has slid down a lot. A lot of these numbers have slid down over the last couple weeks. Actually, if you look at it, the trend is that the team looks worn out. You know, it's funny. I heard somebody, I think it was either Tone or Rob say something that I don't think enough people are giving the birds credit for what they're doing right now and where they are coming off of a Super Bowl loss in a tough-ass season of football from a year ago to where they are at 10-2. and two. Those guys are right. This is pretty remarkable. I mean, we've seen teams like the Rams and Bucks the last couple of years that went on a Super Bowl run. They fell apart the next year. They literally fell apart. Most teams fall apart. Attrition, player movement, re-signing, not re-signing. You get a different ball team every year. Would we not agree the Eagles 2023 is completely different than the Eagles 2022? This is a different team, isn't it? You guys are looking at the birds. Some of you look at the birds as being the same team. They're nowhere near the same team. There, you, there's, you're nowhere near the same team. All you have, and by the way, that's not some gigantic epiphany, I hope, to some. Okay? You're, you're just not the same team from last year. This is a completely different group of dudes. And what I mean by that is, yeah, but Sills, Lane, and Malata, those guys are, I'm talking a 53 group. This is a team. Jalen Hurts, AJ, Devontae, Hassan, right. But as a group, completely different. It's this, it's the coordinator. You get it now. The whole thing is new. And for where they are, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, it's 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 utterly remarkable where this football team is. 126 in rushing yards, eighth, which I think is pretty damn good too. Um, Points scored, 27-4. Fourth, damn good. Your offense really isn't the issue. It's the way it operates. In my opinion, that's the issue here. Okay? It's It's the way it operates. Your defense, pass defense, 260.3, it's 29th. It's, without question, your biggest problem right now is your pass defense. Your rush defense has come down also, 90.3. You were at one time in the 60s. Now you're fourth in rush defense. Points allowed, you're 24th, which is terrible. And you've give and you're averaging 24 points. Eagles are seven three and two versus the spread. Rebounding versus the Niners. Are you the better team? Yes. Are you the healthier team? No. Are you the more rested team? No. It's at home. It's division opponent. The Cowboys played you great at your place. I have the Cowboys one in 26-24 on Sunday versus the birds. Um, And then that sets that Seattle game up for even more of an importance. Now, 
I'm picking Dallas because I think they're in better shape. They're not better than San Francisco. And quite frankly, I don't think they're better than you. But I still think you're gone through a ton of football, of high-level football. You, do I think you're going to put a spectacular effort up? I do. I think you're going to look like the old Eagles. But again, here, here's, here's where I go with this. When's the last time you swept them? What would make you think coming off of an ass beating and all those hard and difficult games that you're going to all of a sudden rebound because of heart and hustle and glory and all that other stuff intangibles? What's that got to do with Sunday? Does that mean they'll play hard? I'm totally expecting them to put a fabulous effort up. Dallas is in better shape right now. This is about the war of attrition. Do I think Dallas can beat you in the playoffs? I do, but I don't think they're better than you. You got to here here's where I think the Eagles rebound this year. When you got to play New York and Arizona at the end of the season, that's when you're going to be able to rest your players and you're not going to have you're going to be able to coast into the seat. I still think you're going to watch this. I think you're going to lose to the Cowboys. I still think you're probably going to be the number one seed in the NFC. Does it matter then? This is about the marathon. Okay, you're talking about a battle here. They're rested. I, I hope we're making sense here. I still think you have, you're, you're going to, you lose that game which I'm predicting you're going to lose that game against Dallas Sunday, I still think you're the favorite to win home field advantage. Dallas has more losses out of conference. Or, you know, I mean, you guys in the conference, excuse me, because you lost to the Jets. They have more in-conference losses than you. So you're going to still have the tiebreaker for the NFC East. I think San Francisco drops that football game against the Ravens. That I could San Fran, hey, could San Fran drop another one? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. San Fran, Sue goes, San Fran's really tough. Yeah, but Sue, they lose one dude for a game. You could lose a game. Because you don't have Debo or you don't have Trent, that team has shown they're far not the same ball team. Whereas the Eagles, they've proven to you they can win without their second best ball player, Lane Johnson. I don't know, man. Plus, from what I'm hearing, hey, is Slay playing? Have we heard anything about Slay? Is Slay playing? I mean, what was what was his status yesterday? He did not practice. They rested him. You're resting a guy heading into a stretch run here where you need a game to stay ahead of the pace when it comes to home field? Wow. Really? You're resting him because he's tired. Fatigue. Slay was back at practice today, so he should be good. The point is... You're resting guys. You're resting guys because of what I talked about last week. Fatigue. Hey. You have played. You know when you guys were talking shit saying you're the gauntlet? The gauntlet's wearing you out. You know why the gauntlet's wearing you out? What Tone and Rob talked about, no one gives them respect for where you are at 10 and 2. Do you know the intestinal fortitude? Get this, guts? You think they're going to man up on Sunday? Shit, that team's been manned up since they lost the Super Bowl in Arizona. That team, 
has put heart and hustle and guts since Arizona. They're not all of a sudden going to man up on Sunday. That team is all manned up. This is about health and player fatigue. The war of attrition. Okay? I'm just saying. LJ goes to Gauntlet has won one game against us. And the game, they murdered you. Get this. So the last two games, you've had to go on to overtime versus a 6-6 six and six team. And against an, a, a Niner team, you were killed. How well do you think you've done the last eight quarters? Good or bad? How do you think? How about this? Let's, let's, let's change that back around. How do you think the team has looked the last eight quarters? What, what, what would you think? If you were the Eagles and you were the analytics guys and the coaches, what would you think about the eight, last eight quarters? Shit, you got to go back to the Kansas City game too because that game was six days earlier. I'd rest them all practice. We could be in the classroom for three days, late practices on Friday. I probably think that's what they're doing. Okay? How about the Cowboys? The Cowboys are playing dog shit teams. You don't have to put... The only team that has played Dallas hard the last month has been Seattle. You guys have been playing... Hey, look, man, I don't have to... I don't have to explain Carolina, New York, Seattle versus Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, and then Dallas again. I don't have to explain myself. If you can't see the glaring difference between the type of effort you got to put in when you're playing the ladder and you're talking about what Philadelphia has done the last month and a half versus what Dallas has done the last month and a half, once again, you're in here and you're blinded like you were last week because you thought your team was going to play again. And you were stunned all week and you moaned and cried all week long. And now here you are on a Friday thinking, we're going to go into Dallas and kick the shit out of Dallas. Your defense is not good enough. Actually, since you played them last, you're worse. You're worse. Just look at the run defense. It's not by coincidence. San Francisco runs the ball. Kansas City and Buffalo don't. Uh, Devin goes, so we lose then, Sills? Yes, 26-24, Cowboys win Sunday. Yes. Yes. Jalen's never had two in a row. Well, guess what? Welcome to the group. You'll be part of that. Never lost two in a row. You sound like you're talking about Georgia. Or you're talking about uh, Michigan, like you're in college here. Snap out of it. This is the NFL. What'd you think? The three-game losing streak that San Francisco had was only isolated to them? Uh, Dallas is not winning by two scores. They're not San Francisco. Hey, by the way, if Dak Prescott turns the ball over, Philly wins. Dallas can't turn the ball over. They cannot turn the ball over. You see, you got to remember something about this game. Do I think that the Eagles can go in there and play an A game? No. You're incapable of playing A game football. Why? Why are you incapable of playing an A game against the Cowboys on Sunday? Can you tell me why? It's as glaring as ever. Why can't you play an A game? Because your defense is a D defense. And it's where it is, right? You are who you are with that defense. Okay? You're not going to all of a sudden have an A-plus game against a team that is hot. Where in the world do you think you're going to? Now, again, I think you go into that game, and I think you put a C-plus effort up. Because that's what your maxim is right now. I don't think you. I don't think you can put a B effort up. 
I think you could put an A, A effort up on offense. I do. On defense? How in the world, hey, how in the world do you trust that defense right now? How in the world do you trust that? De hey, we knew eventually this was going to come down to where all of a sudden this thing was going to end up having to pay the bills on this thing here. And you weren't going to be able to get by on that offensive side of the ball carrying your football team and Hurts carrying the team. Jalen Hurts, I hear, oh, by the way, I have some other breaking news for you. Here's some breaking news. I heard that Jalen Hurts is um, nursing a absolutely horrific back and a sore back. That's breaking news. But he might have structural damage. You know why? Carrying your football team for the 2023 season. This guy has to have a bad back for carrying your football team. That guy's carried your football team the entire year. He's carried your team. How could he not have a back injury? <laughs> Knee injury? That guy's got a back injury carrying you all year. Dude, seriously, there is not a dude in the NFL more valuable to his team than that guy. He's not on your team. That's a five-win football team. With all your talent, you know who you are? You're the Chargers. Bruce goes, you scared me, asshole. Have we never heard of metaphors before? I hope so. <laughs> hey, you guys are like, wait a minute. Oh, Jalen's got a bad back injury? What, what's going on? Yeah, carrying your team. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, am I right? This dude's carried your football team all season long. The only reason you're going to have a puncher shot on Sundays because of him. Let me throw this at you, too. I'm going to revisit one topic here with you. Do you think that the Philadelphia Eagle offense, this season, one of the reasons why the football team passing-wise, and maybe he misses a lot of open wideouts, is because they've become too reliant on A.J. Brown? who's been a little quiet over the last couple weeks. Do you think that was the right philosophy? Now, look, he's a, he's a superstar player. Okay? He's a superstar player. He makes $20 million. You get him the ball. I'm not, I'm not saying you don't get him the ball. Tone's back probably hurting, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> too many excuses for Hurts? How do you have an excuse when you're 10-2? and two? What's the excuse? Jalen Hurts and the Eagles don't need an excuse. You're 10-2. and two. Always remember that. My criticism is about this. You know what? You criticize more when there's less to criticize about when you're talking about great football teams. That's how some of you assholes don't get it. It's Dude, when you have a bucket of things to complain about with your shitty football team like the Cardinals or the Bears or Carolina or places like that, front office, draft choices, sending commodities away, trading up to get bread, there's a ton of places to go. But when you're 10 and 2 and you're this close to winning a Super Bowl, you complain more. You know why? Because you're that close and you can feel it and you can taste it. Some of you go like this, we're 10 and 2. Doesn't it bug you if you don't win a Super Bowl that you were 10 and 2 again? Doesn't that bug you? Or is it just like this? I have, you know, I have, uh, 2024, we'll be ready for next year. Okay? Some of you guys, I mean, you're this close to being great. Here, let me, hey. Let's do this here. 
Let's do this. Who's under more pressure in the NFC right now to win a Super Bowl, 49ers or the Eagles? Hey, San Francisco guy. Man, I, I, the Eagles, not an excuse. It's kind of historic what they're doing. Okay. It's kind of historic what the Eagles are doing. It's, it's really not supposed to happen. But if you're the 49ers, you killed the Cowboys. You killed the Eagles. If you don't win that Super Bowl, hey, Kyle, you know how Tone and me and everyone talk about Nick and that job pilot light? Hey, Kyle, you have the best roster in football. You don't get to the Super Bowl? Don't you start doing this? Well, what else we got to give them? You got a guy who's playing MVP quarterback. You got an MVP running back. You got an all-pro wide receiver talent in Debo. You got another kid who's a pro bowler in Ayuk. You got a pro bowl tight end in George Kittle. You got a Hall of Fame right tackle in Trent Williams. We went out and paid $20 million for Javon Hargrave. You got two of the best linebackers, probably the best linebacking core in the league. We got you, Chase Young. We're paying Bose a thirty million. We lost to Fonga. We went out and our corners are playing great. You tell me, San Francisco doesn't win that. It's more of a disaster for San Francisco, and I think that team, they don't win the Super Bowl, dude. That's a big time loss for that organization. Shit, if the Eagles don't win it, you're like this. Did anybody really? in their right mind think that a team and it's documented historically don't get back to the Super Bowl let alone get in the 10 and 2 I mean it's not an excuse it's history I think the Eagles are playing with house money they're playing with house money that's why no one believes you No one believes you because you know why? Dude, let me say this to you. You win the Super Bowl this year, people have to start talking dynasty or the foundation of one. Only great teams put great seasons back to back to back to back to back to back, no matter what the schedule says. Shitty teams, good teams, does it matter? That's why if you wobble a little bit, Niners and Cowboys, Dude, it's not the end of the world. It's just not. Do I think you're going to be more battle-tested for the playoffs than the Cowboys? Dude, here's what's going to happen. The Cowboys win on Sunday is going to go to their head like it does every regular season, and they'll drop two to Buffalo and Miami, and you'll keep winning ball games. You'll win the way out, and you'll win home field. And you'll do the normal, split with Dallas. It's not a horrible thing. It's not a horrible thing. You're not looking at this as a war versus battles. No shit everyone wants to win every battle. No American army from World War II to Korea to Vietnam, to Desert Shield and Storm, has ever won every battle. Well, maybe the ones in Desert Shield and Storm. Okay, get this. You want to know? Hey, I heard that thing. And I'll, I'll show you what Sean McDermott praising the Taliban. What an idiot. Dude, right. You know what? It ain't Ken Dorsey. It's that idiot. You want to make an analogy when it comes to war? America won every battle in Vietnam, every battle in Vietnam. And we were the ones that pulled out. 
That's what he should have said. Okay? This is about winning the war. Okay? Not battles. Like George Foreman says, I'm not looking to win rounds. I'm looking to win the fight. Okay? Huh? Eagles are battle tested. Eagles are, hey, could that play a factor on Sunday that the Eagles are more battle? Boy, I'll tell you what, if you're Philly, man, and you're, if you're, ta- you're tired and if Philly gets the Cowboys into a four quarter football game, I don't trust Dallas to win that game. I, I would try. Dallas has to have the lead by 10 points going into the fourth to win it. They have to have the lead because I don't trust their medal. Shit, the Eagles are down 10. You watch the Cowboys. Don't let them come back into that game. It'll be a three point ball game somewhere in there like that because don't let them back in. Devin goes, what if we win? You lock up probably home field and you send the Cowboys into a four-game spin. That's what happens. Devin, that's what happens. Remember something. You don't get um, a medal for beating Dallas. You don't get a bouquet of roses for beating Dallas. It's your job. It's your job to beat Dallas. Hey, Devin, you, 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 if you beat Dallas, their season could be over. And they could go down to the seventh seed. Miami and Buffalo will beat them if you beat them. If they win, you give them hope. False hope. I do not think Dallas is a Super Bowl team right now until they show me Sunday. If they beat you on Sunday, a wounded team, a tired team, a team that's gone through incredible battles the last month and a half, they better beat you. To me, the pressure's on Dallas Sunday. Nobody's going to look at a 10-3 and Eagle team coming off of a Super Bowl playing the amount of games that you've played. Then you know what we're going to get a chance to see? Then we're going to get a chance to see if Dallas can do what you guys did. And some people said three and two. Most people said if you came out of that stretch three and two, they'd be okay with that, wouldn't they? I know you want perfection. I get it. But if you come out of that stretch three and two, let's see if Dallas can duplicate that with Miami and Buffalo on the tail end of your games. I don't believe they can. I believe they can and will beat you Sunday, but I don't believe they're going to do what you guys did over a five-game stretch. It's going to be more impressive what you guys did as a collective group playing those teams, going into KC and winning. Enormous. Beating Buffalo in overtime. Enormous. San Francisco game, no question about it. Beating Dallas. Let's not forget that thing. Look, guys, you have played some rough ball, man. It's got, and by the way, this is not a shot at your metal, your character, your heart, your talent. Well, it is on defense. Look, if your defense was better, I'd pick you. Here's here's what my problem is going into the game. You trust that shitty defense more than you trust the Cowboys right now playing at home where you haven't swept them in what, since 2011? What do you trust more? A defense that can't cover 
and has shown they can't cover? Or do you trust the Cowboys at home? I trust the If the Cowboys were playing in Philly, I would take you. I trust the Cowboys more at home. Sunday. Dude, it's about circumstances, too, sometimes on Sunday. Once again, Seals, are you saying Dallas is better than us? No. I didn't think Cleveland was better than San Francisco. I didn't think Minnesota was better than San Francisco. I didn't think Cincinnati was better than San Francisco. Like, you guys keep bringing up, <clears throat> okay? Hey, DRC. Remember this, I still think you're going to be the favorites. Even Dallas has to win. You know, I, I keep hearing people go, this is a must win for the Eagles. Really? You think it's a must win when you're talking about the Cowboys having to run the tape and run through the tape. What's more likely? Here, let's ask you this one. What's more likely to happen? The Eagles losing on Sunday. Or the Cowboys, and, and with the Eagles losing Sunday and still getting home field advantage in the NFC playoffs, or the Cowboys running the tape and beating the Eagles Sunday, what's more likely to happen? What would you put your money on? Pretty simple to me. I'd put my money on Philly. Dude, what's the saving grace about you versus these other teams? Look at those shitty teams you're playing at the end of the year. Fabulous. God, you need to be able to come up for air. Our defense has to be better this week with Shaq and Zach. Jesus, crime any dirty D. You're kidding me. You're going to hope for a guy coming off of IR and you're hoping, what was it? A hamstring. You're hoping a guy comes off. By the way, hamstring injury. Fatigue. Dude, the only guy on this injury report is Goddard. Forearm. That's not a fatigue injury. That's shitty luck. Even, even um, stole, knee. That's not a fatigue injury. That's just an in-play injury. And an in-game injury. The rest of these, groins, hamstrings. Groin. Julio Jones, I told you, man, that guy was not going to last a second. He was going to get here, play a couple games, and go on IR. Why? Because his Achilles tendons have been horseshit for four years. Why do you think Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay knew you couldn't play the guy more than 12 games and give him a ton of reps. That was a couple years ago. Julio Jones' body is failing him, not his ability. Do you understand what happens to NFL guys as they get older? Their ability doesn't leave them. Their body does. Like, you're still the same player. But you can't jump as high. You can't bend over more. You don't have the flexibility. Your hamstrings don't allow you to do some of the things you could do in the past. That's your body falling apart. It's not anything to do with ability. Shaq Leonard, you think Shaq Leonard's going to have any kind of thing left? Again, here's the thing with Shaq. Is Shaq an all-pro linebacker still? Yeah. Does Shaq Leonard have an all-pro body? No. You have to, as a football organization, come to the realization, who is he? What is he? Zach Cunningham, groin injury or hamstring injury, old man injury, a lot of reps. That's you going into a game against, hey, you just came out of a grueling, physically exhausting. What was that stat? Teams that played San Francisco 
and then the teams that played them and lost going into the next week. I think they're 29 and 1. Or 1 in 29, excuse me. That was a physical beating on top of the physical games you played. This is not excuse. This is what the league is. I hear Tone saying it, and he's right. This is a week-to-week deal. The Cowboys are fresh, like the Niners were fresh. Did the Niners not play fresh? They have to, had 10 days. Dude, I'm so happy that Seattle game got flexed to Monday night. It gives them an extra day's rest. That's fantastic, actually. Now, you're lucky you got a shitty team on the back end of that. I think it's Arizona, right? Or one of the New York or New York that's on the tail end of that. I hope it's New York. Because they've already packed the um the U-Hauls. David says, I love my Eagles, but facts rule over favoritism. They need that punch in the mouth now. I want to see them respond Sunday night. They're going to respond. I do not look at the Cowboys to give them any kind of like game like San Francisco. They're not that good. They're not as good as San Fran. But I have, hey, you know what you, maybe this is more this. If Dan had his own TV show, the edit crew would absolutely have their hands full. (laughs) Yeah, because you know what you'd be doing? You'd be Xing out some of the things that I was saying because... I'm right. Hey, Dallas, Seattle, New York, Arizona, New York, last five. It's New York, fantastic. Seattle Monday night, New York on Sunday. Great. 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 Once you get done with that Seattle game, I want to see, I want to see San Francisco and Dallas. It's going to be in their hands. Dude, even if you're a game behind, you're still going to – you're still going to – I still think you're going to win home field. Okay? I still think you're going to win home field. Let me say this to you. Can I – why do you think I'm picking Dallas on Sunday? Why do do you think – Tone said that DeVito's tough. Yeah, because he's Italian. He's a paisan. <laughs> Adam. I hope he's taller than Danny DeVito. <laughs> That's all I care. Guy rolls around with the uh, getting medals out and all that. I like it, man. He's got a little bit of uh, Soho in him. <laughs> Tone goes, I never said he was tough. Don't worry, Tone. I know people put words in your mouth, man. I know that. He's a Q's guy? Oh, that's right. Danny DeVito's a Syracuse dude. That's right, man. Why do you think I'm picking Tommy Cutlets? <laughs> that's a cute name for him. <clears throat> that's what you guys should do. Tommy Cutlets. I like it. That's a cute name. I said he had an Italian loan shark name. I like it. Hey, DeVito, DeVito's loan shark. Or no, DeVito Bail Bondsman. You got it, man. No matter what your crime is, I'm going to send DeVito down. DeVito's bail bonds. That's right, man. Hey, shoplifting, stealing cannolis, whatever it is. DeVito's bail bondsman. How you doing? We never hold you hostage. <laughs> Loki, fatigue and shit defense. Eagles are going to have to show me they can play defense. I've lost confidence. Oh, yeah. Port Authority. (laughs) Look at you guys bringing out, dropping out Port Authority. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, I got to tell you, man. I'm sorry, but I have no, I've lost confidence in your defense. How can you guys have confidence in your defense? How, How can you have confidence? What do you have confidence in your defense on? Name me one thing you're confident on in your defense right now. Here, I'll, I'll give it to you. If you guys name one, I'll go like this. Okay, you guys are right. 
Give me your confidence. Dan, what is your I'll get to those greasy. We'll we'll do we'll do week 14 of the NFL a little bit later on. What, what what's your confidence in your when your defense? Shaq. <laughs> okay. Hassan. Okay. He's 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 your best player, sure. No, 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 no. Godfrey, I didn't say offense. What's your confidence level with defense? I've lost complete confidence in him. You guys are going to the offensive side. I don't have a problem over there except your play caller stinks. Or your analytics and I don't know. Maybe it's not even Brian. I don't know what you got going on over there. This looks a little chaotic to me over there on offense. And you know what it is? It's the brain thrust that are getting in the way of the players. So I don't know what you got going on. You got too many decision makers. I wouldn't want to have seven different guys telling me how to storm the beaches at Normandy. I'd only want Eisenhower, wouldn't you? <laughs> you imagine Eisenhower taking 48 guys' different opinions on should they go to gold or should they go and should they storm this side of the beach or this side of the beach? And Eisenhower, at the end of the day, had to make the final call. <laughs> so I don't know what you got going on over there. You imagine, imagine Eisenhower and D-Day. Hey, what do you think? 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 He's like this. We're doing this. <laughs> Bad weather. I don't give a shit. We're going now. To me, Ike. Hey, McDermott. Could have used anything, right? Ike storming the beaches at Normandy. Bad weather. They wanted to cancel it. He's like this. We're going. Liberated Europe. Because the guy had a gut feeling. Liberated Europe. Now we're going. Philly, Philly. Run it. That's I, I like that. I like those brass balls. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? I want that. Ike, it's too bad of weather. You know? Gold is not the beach to hit. I don't care. We're going. Hey, silly, I gave Dallas 31 points versus Philly. That's as biased as I can be. <laughs> Keep in mind, I got Eagles in overtime, 34-31. That's over the number. 51 and a half is the number. Fly, Eagles, fly. David, nice pick, though, man. Okay? Okay? Seals, you saw? I did. LJ, I did. I thought, hey, I did. Okay? I don't think your defense is as good as Seattle's defense. I have no confidence in your defense. Dude, Jalen Hurts is the reason you're 10 and 2. Plain and simple. No other player on your team is more responsible for that record than him. I would say this in Kansas City. I don't know. Would you split it between the defense and Mahomes this year on how they're playing? Would you split it? Kansas City's defense? Mahomes, 50-50, right? 49ers, defense, offense, 50-50? What do you got in Philly? You got 90-10. Hurts and the offense. In spite of the bullshit way that they do business. Look at Dak. Against these shitty teams. I showed you. Their defenses showed up this year. They don't give a lot of points up. They're fourth in points allowed. They're fifth in passing yards allowed. They're third in passing offense. And they're, get this, you're first in points scored, you're the Cowboys. And you're fourth in points allowed, 50-50. You think that that average is in Philadelphia?
I'm telling you, man. Don't don't sweat this. Sills picked the Cowboys, and he's saying don't sweat it because there's still ball to be played here. Do I trust the Eagles over the Cowboys down the stretch, even when they lose on Sunday? Yes. You're going to finish 14-3. and three. What is wrong with you? You look at these week-to-week games as end-all. I look at the season ending and what have you done as a season. You split. You split with the Cowboys, which is normal. You went three and two during that gauntlet. You won home field advantage. You won the East. <laughs> what? What do you? What have you done different this year than last year? When it comes to securing home field, what are you talking about here? Shit, I had us finishing 12 and 5 before this season started. I will take for you're 14 and 3 with a tougher schedule, with a shittier defense, and coordinators, you're not sure where they're getting their information from. I think this goes back to what Angelo said. You guys are never satisfied with a really good cheesesteak sandwich and a really good pretzel. I'm sorry. No matter if it's the best pretzel, no matter if it's the best cheesesteak, no matter if it's the greatest Chesapeake Bay blue shell crabs, you're never satisfied with the meal. No matter what it is, you guys are never satisfied. They Hey, what? You believe, here, here, here's you guys. Shit, we won the East. We got home field. We went 14 to three and we split with the Cowboys. Coming off a Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. There's always a better cheesesteak. We just got to keep looking. Hey, see? It's actually a good attitude. As a matter of fact, man, I made myself a cheesesteak sandwich too because you couldn't find anything in Commie, California that could ever be made like um, the East Coast or especially someplace in Philly. You put the cheesesteak on there. You put that cheese on there. You get the peppers on there. You get the green peppers, the red peppers. You put the shake, the hot. Oh, you never do it. I would seafood, restaurants. And cheesesteaks are not to be eaten on the West Coast. And pizza, for that matter. And pizza. Don't ever have a pizza in California. It's not good. I'd rather get... I'd rather get rigatoni's, that frozen pie, than eat anything out of one of these places. Don't matter who cooks. I always got to add a little bit of... <laughs> uh, we're about to sweep the boys. Okay, that's good. All right. I don't have a problem with you thinking. Hey, by the way, DRC, do I, hey, two things. I, honest to God, here's my two things heading into this ball game. I don't, stop with this comment. Stop it. Will, will, will the Eagles step up? How, you insult your team when you say that. That's insulting. How are they going to respond after that game against the Niners? I would look at you and go, shut your mouth. How are we going to respond? I Really? Really? After two and a half years, you question their mettle all week long. Many media people, how will they respond? It's an insult. If I was a member of the Eagles and I saw those questions being asked and I saw a ton of them being asked about the Eagles and you're 20 and four in the last two years coming off a of Super Bowl and you're where you are, tone's right, it's remarkable where you are, and you ask, how will you respond? You don't really know me. 
Arthur goes and sills. Why are you picking the Cowboys? I trust Dallas at home, not on the road. They had a 10 day rest. You guys have not swept them since 11. They played your right down to the wire in the last game at your place. Dak's playing good ball. And here's the deal. Not that I trust the Cowboys, but I surely have lost faith in your defense. That's why. You need to get on the back end of that schedule to get some rest. You'll be able to coast home after Seattle and go 14-3. and three. Then you'll look back at me and go, damn, he's right. We had the same record as last year. So you're telling me you'll have a problem splitting with Dallas and going 28 and six in the regular season in the last two years, becoming the first team to win back to back NFC East titles since I can't remember when, securing so the number one overall seed. And what's the complaint again? What, what's your complaint? Our models in San Jose, I will. It, 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 Anthony goes, Sills, 14 and 3, give us the number one seed? Yeah. Um, 14 and 4? I don't know, because I think San Francisco's going to lose to the Ravens. I think they're going to lose to the Ravens. That's a tough matchup. That's a tough matchup. Okay? I think that's a tough matchup. I do. Niners are not going to beat the Ravens. David, trust me. Look, 28 and 6. And you're complaining winning two NFC East titles and two years in a row of home field. When's the last team in the NFC to do that? Win home field advantage two years in a row. Green Bay? I think it was Mike Schmidt that said something along the lines of playing in Philly, you got a you got the thrill of victory. And <laughs> hey, seriously, the last team to win home field two years in a row has to be the Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay, LaFleur teams, right? David goes, I'm not complaining. I just hope the Niners. Listen, listen. One more time. You guys insulting your team all week by saying, how will they respond? I have no question how they're going to respond. Why did you? You guys have been lifelong Eagle fans. And every media person, even on our channels, were asking, how will the Eagles respond? That was never a thought in my head how they would respond. I've seen how they've responded. All year, I don't need a 49er ass kicking to convince me that you got look how fast you guys got knocked off your heels on the conviction of that team off of four quarters of ball. I don't get it. So, four quarters of football shook you that much that it shook your confidence in them when it came to character. I, I, I'm stunned actually. Dude, I've heard a ton of people, IP, Fanatic, our channel, columnist, all doing it. How will they respond after that? It's the most insulting question you can ask. Because if you're not sold by them now and you think four quarters of football and having an awful day is an indictment on Hertz and the character, you're like every god dang guy out there that doesn't believe in Jalen Hurts. How'd you lose? How'd you get rattled that much? Just listening to people talking all week, they got rattled. I've never seen an Eagle Cowboy week so downplayed in my life because you got kicked in the nuts. That's right, William. Really, three quarters of football. You lost your faith in a team at three quarters. Really? I never questioned their medal. I questioned all the hard games they played, their health, the rest, the gauntlet of teams you played on. I've never said anything. 
You know what's funny? You guys think I ripped them, and I've never lost confidence in them. You have. Bottom of the NFC stinks. One seed less significant in 23. It's a good point. But I think a team like Philly, who's played such tough games this year, dude, you got tough schedule in the league. I mean, you might want to rest. San Francisco didn't have the gauntlet of teams that you played this year that they played. Okay? How in the world... How in the world do you lose confidence in three quarters on a team that is 20 and four at the same point last year? I don't know. I, you know, it has to be because some people haven't played or they don't have faith. How'd you get here? Man, you guys in Philly lose a lot of faith quick. You're quick to react. And you're quick to lose faith. That's why you went differently on Hertz when he was drafted to where you are now. And when Wentz was this guy, and then he became that guy, you flipped overnight. I've never flipped on your team. I've given you all the reasons why I think you'll lose Dallas. Yours is confidence. Mine is who you played, the defense. You're the ones that have lost confidence. How will they respond? That wouldn't be my first question. My first question would be, how's the health of the team? What's the practice schedule like? Okay. <clears throat> Does Dallas open up opportunities because what's their number? <clears throat> What is, what is Dallas when it comes to rushing? They're 12th in rushing against. Is there an opportunity maybe to run the ball more here? How's the health of Goddard? Because he'll help on the edge with Dexter Lawrence. How's Slay's health? How has Shaq Leonard come along in his studying? You know, they kept him off the practice field one year, one week, one day because they wanted him in the classroom so he could get caught up to speed. Okay. Tank goes, you still have the Cowboys and Bills in the Super Bowl? I'm not wavering off that because they haven't been eliminated. Why would I? I'm not going to lie. I lost a little confidence after Frank responded to your text. Dirty D. I know, man. Seth and I were talking again about it last night. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you have the coaches to fight back on analytics. And that's in some time. Hey, what was that one time when Tone, Tone said something to me. Hey, man, you remember when Jalen went off the field and Nick said some comment to him? This is why we pay you and have confidence in you or something like that. And Jalen looked at him and said, you should always have confidence in me. I'm paraphrasing here. It's because Nick doesn't have confidence in the intel he's getting with the analytic guys. All these little tea leaf things now make a ton of sense. How many, the, how many times have we seen Conservative plays being called in critical moments because the analytic guys say that that's not percentage-wise going to work. And they go conservative. I thought they went conservative in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. It, it, it just makes sense. Okay? Dude, trust? Is faith, blind faith. Chris, I tell people this all the time. When you're an NFL player, college player, any kind of sports guy, and you have a coach, and I've told some of the people the story this, and I've told a ton of people this story. 
you know, Miami was playing Notre Dame and somebody asked me to get up there and say something. I said something on the Zoom and I went, how many people in here believe in God? And everybody put their hand up. Most of everybody put their hand up and said, I believe in God. I go, how do you know he's real? I have faith. I go, so you have blind faith that Jesus Christ is on. And I do too. I believe, yeah, I believe too. That blind faith, I have faith in God. Your coach, there's the same kind of metal to that. You have to have blind faith that your coach is going to put you in a position to succeed when you haven't seen him succeed and you've never seen him perform. But you have to have blind faith in that. And you've got to have the same mental fortitude to apply that as you do anything you have strong conviction in. And if you don't, you're never going to succeed at it. Okay? You've got to have a mental makeup as an athlete that when you believe in something, you're all in. How, teams that aren't all in, those are the teams that don't succeed. I think it's simple. I don't think it's complicated. People complicate it. Okay? That wouldn't shock me if Frank Reich meets with ownership in Buffalo to become the offensive coordinator up there for Josh Allen. Um, kind of the word being thrown around. Frank Reich back to Buffalo as the OC. So just something to keep out there and keep focused on there too. So just something to keep it there. Okay, 3.30, my friend Tone, the segment's going to join us. Don't forget, Saturday, our great friends at Hooters have us coming into town we will be there from 3.30 to 5.30. I hope many of you show up. I'm so looking forward to seeing some of you. Um, all of you, actually. Yeah, even you, Keon. <laughs> okay? Even you, Keon. Okay? So come on out. I hope all of you can make it out there. There's going to be Eagle tickets to give away. We're going to have Eagle jerseys also that we're going to be giving away. We're going to have merchandise. There's a whole ton of stuff that we're... We're giving away here. Hooter specials going on. Lunch specials too, man. Monday through Friday, 11.30, 3 p.m. Uh, seafood Sundays, um, half price snow crabs, buffalo shrimp. Got to love the, all the great specials that they have, especially during this time. Santa bonus bucks. Got to love them. $5. They're gift cards. They're great stocking stuffers. Uh, go to Hooters.com. The calendars are out too. Nine of the girls. Are featured from the Northeast section from Rhode Island through Jersey down to King of Prussia. Really awesome. So don't forget, 3.30 to 5.30 tomorrow, we will be out there. I'm leaving the Dan Cave. We'll be out there with a bunch of stuff. So we look forward to seeing you. I think we're doing an hour show out there on Saturday too, if I'm not mistaken. Tone will join us at 3.30. We'll talk more birds as we get ready for a football Sunday, a big football Sunday. And we'll explain again why we're taking the Cowboys on Sunday over the birds. We'll do that next. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Ball and Hooters, the perfect pair.
If you own a company and you're not producing a podcast, you're missing out. The public consumes messaging when they're ready. Join the professional podcast network of companies and let Jacob Media Partners put you in the podcast arena. Come to our professional studio or we'll come to your place of business and professionally produce your company podcast. Call Jacob Media right now at 267-261-3428. 267-261-3428. Any professional sports coach will tell you there's no substitution for preparation. At Malamut & Associates, that is a tenet by which we live. We prepare from day one for victory. Anything less is not acceptable. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. National Football Show. You surely have to love the NBA making sure that LeBron has multiple chances of winning titles so you can make the argument he's the GOAT over Jordan. He validates, and this is why it's important for the Lakers to win that in-season basketball tournament. If the Pacers win it, no one cares. If LeBron wins it, He puts that on his Wikipedia page. And then it's five titles. Then he's one shy of Jordan. Yeah, but Sills, that's not the NBA. Well, the NBA is pimping that thing like it's as important as the NBA Finals. So what they're doing is they're giving LeBron, because he's running out of time, multiple shots at catching Jordan. It's quite pathetic. They rigged a tournament up so that he could potentially catch Jordan. Because in five years from now, because right now we're in the macro. We're in the macro. We're going to look at it like, well, it's not as big as the finals. He wins it this year and he's the MVP. Five years from now, they will in the conversation when you're debating Jordan versus LeBron. Remember this, this is not about you and me now. This is about five years from now. Jordan's more revered today than he was even at the end of his career. Okay, last dance, all that shit. 15 years from now, that in-tournament thing will be a thing. He won five titles. He wins the NBA championship. He ties Jordan for six. And I'll always say this to you. How is the guy that played in Los Angeles, not the greatest player of all time, Abdul Jabbar? He was the greatest player of Power Memorial in high school history. He was the greatest college basketball player of all time. And he's the greatest NBA player of all time with the greatest shot of all time. I don't know how you don't look at that. And he was at one time the NBA's leading scorer for a thousand years. This guy was the goat at every level. But we and Russell in Boston with all those championships. We are so in the now with people. Jordan's Jordan isn't a bigger winner than Russell. And he's not a better player than Wilt. 
or Kareem? Shit, is he? Hey, is LeBron better than Kobe? Is do you think LeBron James is better than Kobe? How come I don't see that? How many people think Scooter says that LeBron's better than Kobe? Really? I'll tell you one thing I dig about Kobe, man. You know what I love about Kobe? He's got five NBA championships and an Academy Award. Jordan's got six championships. I don't know, man. That Academy Award, I kind of dig it. <laughs> you know, you know, hell, you know what I mean? He's got five titles in, a, in an Academy Award. You know, I, I don't know. That's pretty, that's pretty dope if you ask me. It, it should, then again, Jordan's got Nike, so I don't know. I, I don't think LeBron is better than Kobe. I don't. Oh, hey, real quick here. So you see the uh, local media guys getting in a tizzy and getting all upset. I think Elliot Spitzer, uh, Polly Shore guy, was shockingly not upset. You see the local beat riders all mad at the guys who were out there with the signs, run the ball, they're all a little upset. Like I told you about most media guys, there's some really cool. D-Gun's awesome. Okay? Awesome. Awesome. That's why I'm not going to say all, but some are, are, like I said yesterday, they're the guys when you're in high school and you're playing dodgeball, that's the guy you want to plant that dodgeball right on the side of his head. That's the guy you want to take. What happened? How come you get that big red mark? Silly will hit me again. Again? This is third week in a row. Yeah, it was the first guy he threw at, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see those guys, you know, they get a little, they get, they get the little panties in the bind because, shit, I think they got more ego than Howie. Okay? I think they got I, I think they got more ego than Howie. <laughs> I think if LeBron stayed in Cleveland and won four or five, there would be a better conversation. Yeah, but you got to do this also, Dirty D on LeBron. He did win three championships in three different cities, and he was the MVP in three different cities in the finals. That's got to be a thing, too. To your point, yes. Okay, but that still, that's still a thing. And I would make one point to you that LeBron, you know, what do you think LeBron James's biggest impact has been in sports? What do you, what do you think his biggest impact has been in sports? Protecting China. No, that's not where I was going, bud. Okay. <laughs> Social justice? I don't think so. Super teams? I think what LeBron James's biggest impact... Let me see what Tone says here with that. Player empowerment. Player mobility, which is player empowerment. You're not going to sit around and let some owner destroy your career and let you sit in a place like Dominique Wilkins in Atlanta for 20 years because they don't want to build a team around you. That empowers the player to go, you ain't doing it, I'm out of here. And he's made athletes today mobile, Brady moving. Brady took, hey, get this. If Brady was the first to leave New England and go somewhere else, he'd get a ton of shit too. When LeBron left Cleveland to go to Miami, he was really the first guy that was that guy that empowered himself to leave because Cleveland and Dan Gilbert weren't doing shit to build things around him. And it made it so organizations were held accountable. Now, fans don't like to hear this. Oh, you're, you're drafted in one place. You should stay there. I should waste my talent in a building because you don't want to put it. Hey, the one thing that the Bulls did for Jordan, they fired Lockery. They fired Doug Collins. They fired all those guys. They brought a guy Jordan hated in. They brought Jerry Krause in. 
NBA nearly eliminated travel because of him. How about this? They brought in a guy Jordan hated, hired a guy who was a CBA coach, and Phil Jackson, and fired. Don't you ever realize Doug Collins was the coach in Washington for a reason? Jordan hired him. That was Jordan's guy. Phil Jackson wasn't. Mike, you got to stop winning scoring titles. It was Jerry Krause that found Luke Longley. It was Jerry Krause that found Tony Kukoc. It was Jerry Krause that traded for Dennis Rodman. Drafted Horace Grant. Brought Steve Kerr in. John Paxton in. Had Bill Cartwright in the room. And most importantly, got Pippen. Without, those, without him bringing all those guys in, Jordan's nobody. Because he's proven to you he's one of the worst owners and executives in NBA history. Without Jerry Krause, Jordan's nobody. But a scorer. He's... Who is he? He's George Gervin. He's George Gervin. A lot of scoring points, put up a lot of points, no titles. He's actually Dan Marino. Sometimes you got to have the guy on the other end that says no. You ever notice that the really great quarterbacks and the great coaches and the great players always had the counter to him? Walsh in Montana, Noel and Bradshaw, Jimmy and Aikman. Go down the list. Tiger and his original caddy and his swing coach, Haney. Those guys at the end hated each other. But they won 14 titles together. You always have to have a guy that gives you the real reason and not a yes man. LeBron's no, who is the most powerful person NBA wise around Jordan or around LeBron? It happened one place, and his most successful place is with Pat Riley. Riley was the guy with magic. Hey, you got to make Kareem feel like it's his team, but it's your team. Always you had a guy. LeBron's never had a guy. Who, who, what coach has he ever had in his coaching career that told him no? Look at who Iverson had. Think about who Iverson had. Okay? Larry Brown. You think Larry Brown was important to Iverson's development as a basketball player? How important do you think Iverson and his college coach, John Thompson, were in his career? That's why when you have great people around you, okay, it's important to have great coaches around you, in my opinion. All right. I'm sure Tone's like, Sills, Cowboys, really? <laughs> I think I've laid my argument out. Your Honor, I think I've laid it out. Um, does the... Um, Prosecutor, have any more questions? No. Nope. Okay. Going to the defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's so funny. You, you brought up a good point with the um, Larry Brown, uh, Allen Iverson thing. Uh, the fact of the matter is Allen and Larry hated each other at first. Hated each other. But Larry, uh, Larry comes, and you know what happens? Uh, AI wins the MVP. And they make it to the finals, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the fact of the matter is you need that you need that yin to your game. Um, you don't need people around you all the time that's going to agree with you, that's going to always embolden you. You always need people around you that's going to challenge you. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I had to say about that. Um, Larry Brown, it's so funny. As soon as he left, as soon as he left Philly, he goes to Detroit, wins the championship. So it's just, listen, Larry Brown knew what he was way. talking about. And, Think and about it. Way. He wanted his way with all those guys up there, like Ray Allen and them guys, and they won it with defense. 
You know what's crazy? Are you, are you, that, mean, like, uh, you mean like Chauncey Billups? And, Chauncey Billups, and, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Richard Hamilton and Ben Wallace. Was it Billups or, the MVP? Oh, I, was, I can't remember. I can't, I I can't thought remember. Billups but, was the MVP of that. That Didn't they sweep the Lakers? I think so. It, it, was, it was the most. It was the most. It, it was Kobe most, late. That was the Kobe Shaq Lakers too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was the weirdest championship because everybody, everybody had the Lakers winning that series. Yeah, and the Pistons just came in and just outplayed them. Yeah, he was the Finals MVP, man. Yeah, I, I, by really, the way, in, insane. Okay, Tone, I made my case why. Right, right. I got Dallas winning this game 26-24. Why do you believe the Eagles win? And by the way, Tone, I understand. I, I understand it. I heard all you guys, I mean, all week long, you guys, how will they respond? Come on, man. You know better than that. So I look at I, I look at it like this, you know, and you know, to, to your point about, you know, why you think uh, Cowboys win, Eagles lose, I, I, I understand how you got to your premise. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to rip how you got there. Um, I'm looking at it like this. Um, this team is coming off of a pretty bad ass whooping. And they're the kind of team that, they respond to things like that. And also, I mean, when's the last time they lost back-to-back games, right? They lost back-to-back games last year against the Saints and the Cowboys, but they didn't have Jalen Hurts playing quarterback, so it's kind of hard for me to judge them fairly then. But when Jalen Hurts is on the field, I can't think of the last time they lost back-to-back games except for maybe 2021. So um, I just have – maybe again, maybe my expectations are a bit too high. Um, I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Um, I don't think the defense is going to be able to do enough um, in the grand scheme of things to try to limit Dallas to under 30 points. Um, my score prediction for this game is actually a 34-30 Eagles. So I think this is going to be a pretty high score game. So over the number, 51 and a half. Yes, yes. I think this is actually going to be a high scoring game. Um, I think the offense is going to have to put up points. And that and that's why the scorecard is going to be what it's going to be. Um Everything you said about the everything you said about this game when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles' health, you know the the Cowboys being uh, more rested, all, all those things are, are are facts and they can't be disputed. And I'm not mad at somebody picking the Cowboys. You know, it's just I have a hard time picking against Jalen Hurts, knowing what the knowing the kind of game they came off I'm of. Not picking against Hurts, I'm picking against. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. You're not. I know you're not picking against Hurts. You're, you're doing Eagles Cowboys. I, I get that. I'm I'm talking about what I'm saying. Yeah, I no, personally, no, no. I personally have a hard time picking against Jalen Hurts in this situation. Um, but you also brought up a good point, too, the fact that when's the last time you swept the Cowboys? So you're going off of history, you're going off of trends, you're going off of facts. I'm not arguing that at all. Um, I just think the Philadelphia Eagles um, have a lot have a lot, to, have a lot, to prove um, coming off of their loss. And, um, again, remember, I said in this stretch, I had them going, what, four and two in this stretch, if you, if you include the first Cowboys matchup. And so far, they're on pace. I mean... Um, even before the season started, I had them going 12 and five, you know, I was looking at the schedule and I'm saying to myself, damn, like I think 12 and five is pretty realistic. And you know, now they're what 10 and two. I think they can, I think they can end the season. So they go uh, 14 and three, 14 they, and three. It's, 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 it's not a bad place to be. And you split with Dallas. Yeah. What are people, what's people's problem? You know, it's Dallas and people, and we hate them with a passion. So that's what that, that's another reason why I'm picking the Philadelphia Eagles. I, I will never pick Dallas in any situation. I, I, I freaking hate them. So um, I'm not, I'm not I'm not picking Dallas against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's just that just goes against the fiber of my being. Um, okay. So that being I'm, said, then yeah, do you have more faith in the Eagle defense or the Cowboys at home with ten days rest, mm-hmm. playing the way they do at home? Right. And you coming through that stretch of tough games where, I mean, dude, there's a lot of tired guys, and the injury report shows the kind of little uh, fatigue injuries that you have here. I mean, so you have more faith that somehow that defense is going to miraculously be rubbed like a magic lamp, and they're no. going to start slowing down Dallas. No, because and they because you great at home. No, because I have Dallas putting up thirty points, so that okay. means. That- so that you means know, the defense. That means the defense didn't do their job, right? You know, if you if you if you allow a team to put up thirty points on you, yep. I'm telling you in my score prediction, I don't think this defense is going to get enough is going to get enough stops. I just think the offense is going to put up enough points to win the game. I think it's I think it's going to be a gun show, and I think the team who has the ball last wins the game. Um, but to but to answer your question directly, I agree with you. I have, it's a fourth quarter game. Dallas should be nervous. 
Right. And but but to answer your question directly, do I have more faith in the Cowboys doing what they do or the Eagles defense doing what they do? I have more faith in the Cowboys than I do the Eagles defense. That's just that's just the fact. The Eagles defense looks porous. Like they can't I've lost faith. I don't trust their defense right now. Not at I all. Don't. I don't trust them. You know, and, and and that's just the fact of the matter. I don't trust them. You know, over the past three weeks, you're surrendering north of 160 rushing yards. I don't care what the overall numbers say for the season. The past three weeks, you're surrendering north of 160 rushing yards. That cannot happen again. So um, I'm curious. I'm actually curious what Dallas's game plan is going to be, because even though their passing is their mainstay. But I'm curious to know if they're going to try to take the ball out of Dak's hands and land on a running game and try to take advantage of the Philadelphia Eagles run defense. I don't think Ferguson. they will. Ferguson. I think me and Rob was talking about this earlier. Rob think Rob has the Cowboys winning because he thinks he thinks Ferguson is going to be an issue for them on third down. Yep. And I understand it's been an issue that all year. And I and I understand I understand that logic completely. Um, as a matter of fact, in my score prediction, I have. Hurts putting up three TDs, two passing, one rushing. Swift giving up a uh, Swift um, putting up a, a touchdown as well, and uh, Jake Elliott kicking two field goals, which amounts to thirty-four points. And then I have Dak putting up three passing touchdowns, and their kicker putting up three field goals as well, which amounts to thirty points. So I just think, I think the Eagles are just going to score more points and take more advantage of their red zone opportunities. So I so again I have the Cowboys putting them thirty points. I don't think the Eagles defense is going to do too much, do is going to do too much to stop them at all. Um, I just think I just think the Eagles offense is going to put up enough points to win the game. You understand win or lose if Dak plays great, Hurts loses the MVP on Sunday night. I think they've already taken the MVP out of his hands after what happened which on is criminal, but which is which is which doesn't make sense to me. Yes, um, it does. Well, you know what? Let me take that. It does make sense to me, but I don't like it. Right. Let me put it that way. It makes Nor sense, I. but I don't like it. I don't like it because you beat Patrick Mahomes. You beat <laughs> Dak earlier in the season. You beat um, Josh Allen in a gun show in the second half. Um, okay, okay, you lose You lose to the uh, to, to the Niners, but so did the Cowboys. The Cowboys the lost to them as well. DJ Walker. It's l okay. L l listen to this, though, right? Yeah. Hear me out on this and tell me what you think about this. <clears throat> the Cowboys, at, the Cowboys and the Eagles both got killed by the Niners, right? We, yep. we agree. We agree on that notion. Fifty-five points combined. But here's the sad thing about it: the, they're trying to say the Cowboys have done more. Oh God! To no. earn, listen to this: they're trying to say the Cowboys have done more to re to reestablish confidence in their in their chances to win it all than the Eagles have done all season, and they've only lost two games. Think about that. The Eagles have beaten have, the Chiefs, that is the Bills. Preposterous. They've beaten the Dolphins, but they're trying to say the Cowboys have done more since that their loss to the Niners. Insanity. To have more confidence in them than the Eagles. That's insanity thinking. It's I don't insanity. understand. Get this. Tone, I have more confidence in this. Cowboys beating them Sunday. The Eagles ending 14-3, and three, winning the East, securing home field. And I have more faith in that than the Cowboys running the tape the rest of the way out. I'm they're willing not, to agree with that. They're going to lose no matter. They're going to lose two more games. I don't know who it's to. It could be to Philly. I think. Listen, I'm it could you, be to Miami. It could. Be I think Buffalo. they lose. I think they lose back to back Miami. And, okay. And, and, and Buffalo. I think that's going to happen. That's why it's so important for the Eagles to win this game. They win this game. They send them down a dark place. Oh yeah. And they're and then they're going to bounce back. They're going to beat the Lions. And they're going to beat the Washington. They're going to beat the Washington really? Commanders. You don't I think, think that Lions game will be close? No, it will. But I don't. Them losing four games in a row be will be crazy. That would be crazy. So I think, I think it's realistic to have them lose in the next three: Eagles, Bills, Dolphins, and then they bounce back and gets bounce bounce back against the Lions, who are unpredictable in my humble opinion. I like the Lions, but they're unpredictable. How about this, um? Man? Have yeah. you ever eaten a really? What's the best cheesesteak you've ever eaten? Have you ever had the best cheesesteak sandwich? There's always better. Okay. All right. Because so you know what it is? Because here, here's, the, here's the thing. 
Why you are make, you not satisfied with that tone? Because I'm from Philly, man. Like we love cheesesteak. Like we, bro, we, bro, you can you you can get a cheesesteak from over a hundred, over two hundred places in the city, and you can always find one that's better than the other. It's true. It's it's like insane. That's why when it you is. go to Philly, when when you go to Philly, I'm telling you this right now. You you better not go to Pat's. You better not go to Geno's. They suck. I'm t- I'm, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, the, they're tourist attractions. They're they're not cheesesteak places. Do not I go, go to, to see. I, I go to all to Broadway places. Like when I go to Little Havana down in Miami, mm-hmm. I go to places that you would not believe that you would they they serve the uh, the um, uh, Cuban food and same thing with Italian food. I don't go to where people go when they say, "Hey, you got to go to the most famous places" because nah, most famous good. places traditionally have good food, but not homegrown nah. food. And so I I I, 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 I subscribe like you do. Listen, go you you can you can't go wrong with Del uh, Delisandros. Yep. You can't go wrong with Chubby's. You can't go wrong with Max's. You can't go wrong with Tony Luke's. You can't go wrong with Ishka Bibbles. Uh well, who's the best? Depends on the day, man. How you feeling? Oh, Dave, how you feeling? Now I know listen. why 14 and 3 to you listen. is a suck ass record. Listen, this <laughs> listen, this is what I do, right? Listen, you you're gonna think I'm a pig, right? Delisandro's and Chubby Steaks are right across, right across the street from each other, right across the street, like literally not even, not even fifty yards. Hatfield like, McCoys. So what I do, Delisandro's the line's typically longer because you know you can't go inside. It's like an outdoor line. So what I do is I go to Delisandro's, I order my steak. Right, it may take twenty to thirty minutes because the line's so long. I'll go over to order my steak. Right, then I'll head over to Chubby's. Right, <laughs> order me a steak, sit in. Eat my food. As soon as I get that text, head over there, take my leftovers, grab my Delisandro steak, go home. Now I got a cheese steak and a half, maybe. You know what I mean? And now I'm feeling great. So you always get a two for one when you go to Delisandro's and Chubby's. Hey, you, know you heard what um, what um, um, Meryl Reese said about Jerome. He'd go all over Philly, man. He'd get four or five cheese steaks. He goes, oh, you're going to give these to your team? He goes, no, these are for me. <laughs> Yo, that, that, that's man. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, it's like, not easy for me, man. I'm telling you, man. Listen, I haven't had a cheesesteak since I left. I, I, I've been out of Philly since July. Ain't no cheesesteaks in that. And I ain't getting no cheesesteak in Texas, bro. No way. Like, I, I, I wouldn't even try it. No way. Yeah, that's me too. I like. I don't eat pizza in California, and I don't eat like. There's one seafood place in Arizona when I go see my daughter when she plays rugby. We found this old school Italian place, mm-hmm. but most of them. Uh, not you know, not happening. I'm scared. Everything is in the East Coast. Mm. You know, it might. Dude, I made myself a cheesesteak the, the other day. It's better than anything I've ever eaten on the West. I'm Coast. better off doing that, right? Yeah, me too. Yo, you I'm said better. you said that earlier in the show. I'm actually going to. I'm going to. Yeah, you should make your own because I'm, I'm you, know, my own. You, know, you know what you're looking for. I'm making my own, man. Like it's it's. I, I, anyway. Okay, what's the yeah. recipe for the Eagles to get this done then on on Sunday? So I said I said this to Rob. I said here are my keys to the game. Uh, both the Eagles need to win the battle in the trenches, offensively and defensively. The offensive line and defensive line, they have to win. I know this they is can. tall, and, I, and they can. I know it's a tall task for the defensive side because of the war of attrition. Did you know Josh Sweat, sidebar, did you know Josh Sweat has already surpassed his snap count from last season? That's over the – with five left? Five games left. You, and you don't have depth over there. Dude, I'm telling you, the loss of Nolan Smith not being able to help out, you know. I don't know why they're not giving him more snaps. That's critical miss, too, on that a little bit. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, they got to win in the trenches. That's wow. one. Um, so, secondly, he's played more snaps than last year with five left. Yes. Go ahead, 12, games versus, 12 games versus 16 games played last year. Go ahead. That's a ton. That's 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 it's insane. And see, Tom, but that's that's why the run the run numbers are going up. And he's the only guy that's done that, by the way. So that tells me they're, they they're miss. That tells me someone's not living up to their living up to the car in the rotation. That that's what that tells me. Okay. And who else? Who else is there? Right. You don't you don't have any depth out there. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, they got to win in the trenches, both sides of the ball. That that's one. Um, number two, they need to establish the run game. Not just run when you want. Establish it. Lean into it. With Hurts? With, I, I actually think they don't give Swift the ball enough. I think they don't give him the ball enough. 
they're going to they incorporate Hurts for sure. But I think they need to give Swift that ball a little bit more. There's no way you give him the ball five times, six times, and say, oh, he, he couldn't he couldn't run. What do you mean? Five attempts? This is the NFL, man. We all listen. You, you you said this. You said this about. I'm not saying Swift is Emmett. I'm not saying that. But you said this about Emmett all the time. He give you three yards there, four yards there, five yards there, six yards there. All of a sudden, thirty yards. You know what I mean? So yeah, one fifty eight, twenty eight carries. You're like right, shit. Right. So and so they need to establish the running game, like legitimately. So that's two. Uh, and three. And this is kind of a two for. This is kind of a two for one as well. But this is my third key. Defense needs to win on third down. Offense needs to win on first down. That's been the problem over the past several weeks. Offense has not been able to win on first down. If the Eagles can find themselves in second and manageable, for example, first and 10, you run the ball or do whatever you do, you get second and five. Okay, you're on schedule, right? Second and five comes, okay, you run a play. Let's say you're third and two, third and one. Okay, you're on schedule. You can't be second and nine, second and 10. You can't do that. So offense has to win first down. Defense has to win third down. Because if you're winning first down, that tells me you're on pace to sustain the drive. If the defense wins third down, that tells me you're getting your ass off the field. So that's what the, I think that's where the game is won and lost, first and third down. Here's, here's something that has been different in Dallas offense this year that I haven't seen in the last three years. Now, probably because in that three years with Dak, there was an injury in there somewhere where he got hurt in that New York game. Yeah. But um, you know what's been different? His off script plays this year when he's out in the perimeter, they've, they've gone up. They've gone up. He has been spectacular in the off script plays, mm -hmm. and that's something Hertz hasn't been this year. Where him in the off script plays, he hasn't been spectacular yeah. in off script. And to me, Tone, the off script plays are a precursor to coming off those RPOs at time, and without that. You've not only taken RPO out of it, you've taken his improvising off and out of the offense where Dak has added that. I'm not saying he's running RPOs because he's not. No, no, I, I, know, I know what you saying, mean, though. When he gets off script and he gets out in the perimeter, kind of like Aaron Rodgers, it's funny. He's playing like Aaron Rodgers was playing in Green Bay when Mike McCarthy was the offensive coordinator. And how many times did we see Aaron Rodgers in off script plays in the perimeter? He would light. Shit, many of those Hail Marys were off script plays that he would throw down the field. So to me, I think Mike has done a great job with him. A lot of underneath stuff. I mean, he's really his quarterback completion percentage and his two things have gone up with him. His completion percentage is at 71, 70 point one. And his INTs, he's on pace for 37 touchdowns and nine picks, and he's 1083. That's all because of the improvisation that he's doing mm -hmm. out of the pocket. And if you notice, even in that Eagle game, he got out in the perimeter. I think, what did he have in that game? 47 yards? Something like that. That were he, like, he killed them outside the pocket because it was so many times where they had him dead to rights, but he would, he found a way to extend the play. Um, you, you brought up a great point about them not incorporating Jalen Hurts' uh, superpower. And that's the RPO. You know, that allows him to really dig deep in his bag of creativity. Um, that forces the defense. Uh, that forces him to. That allows him to manipulate defenses, right? So, I, I, I don't, I don't, I really don't understand. I, I, don't, I, I do understand. I don't like the fact that they think that they're trying. They're doing him justice by not allowing him to use the RPO. It's a. It's they a want part, to protect him. It's a part of. It's, it's a part of his skill set. It's a part. It's it's a part. He he maximizes it better than anybody we've you, seen. You're bringing up a really great point as an overall view of this gauntlet kind of part of the schedule here. Do you think an analytical mentality and a coaching and philosophical take is this? If we go three and two in this without having this guy run RPOs and we end up 14 and three, who cares at the end of the day, as long as he's healthier going, going into the playoffs. That's true. And I him playing 17. Wouldn't it be this at the end, the Eagles are going to look at you and me or people that, have been bagging on the uh, coordinator on offense, they're going to go, we won home field. We won the East for the second time, two years in a row. He's healthy. The quarterback's healthier than he was a year ago. We win. Your, your takes may be true, but at the end of the day, our analytic guys 
were right in the end because everything they predicted was right. Even though, Tone, get this, you and I don't like the way the picture was painted, but at the end, it sold for the same price. That's a hell of a metaphor, and you bring up a great point, and that makes me want to ask you this question, right? And I know you and I don't really like talking like this um, in terms of like, do you think everything you said based off, you know, his health and wanting to preserve him for the playoffs, do you think they told themselves, let's tread water as much as possible throughout this season with our play calling. Let's not put him in harm's way as much as we can. Let's win games. We get home field advantage. The playoffs start. Then we start bringing out the RPOs again. Because at that point, at that point, it's when to go home. Do you think? Do you think they said that to themselves, or do you, do you think that's been a conversation? Let's preserve him for as long as we can. Get to the playoffs, and then we take it, and then we take the uh, the handcuffs. And then you off. unleash it. You, you unleash it. Yeah. You got to remember when you're. And we don't like. I don't like. Like, I don't like the idea of holding things back. I don't like that logic. I, I, I get just, it, but, but you got to remember, analytic guys aren't coaches, so you got to think like a librarian or a CPA kind of guy on how they see it. Remember something. Those guys traditionally, when they're doing – look, um, Elon Musk makes the right thing. When when you're talking about calculus and you're talking about um, any kind of fundamental thing like that, when you're talking mathematics, right. you can't move the sticks in any way and take one element away from when you're talking about calculus because the result won't be the same. That's how they see it. Coaches add the human element to it. And you have a, you have a conflict in that, so they're looking at it through this through what you just said. Hey, man. NFC sucks. There's two teams in it. We're ten and two. Why should we sit there and put all chips in on San Francisco, and run the RPOs in that game, risking Hurts being hurt? What's the point of having him? Like Joe Burrow sitting at home right now in Cincinnati. What's mm. the point? We get through. We get out of this Seattle, past Seattle, dude. You're gonna coast home. You're gonna coast home. Probably worse, 12 and 5, 14 and 3. You're gonna be in a battle for the home field. You're gonna win the East. The Cowboys aren't winning the East. They're just not winning the East. I do not believe I see the medal in that team to win. And by the way, I don't think the Cowboys are better than you. I just think they're in better shape than you mm. right now. I, I just think you're they're in. I mean, that, that's reasonable. I'd like to play Dallas after the Miami game. Exactly. Because Dallas has not had this, this entire schedule Dallas has played thus far has been smooth sailing. They no have rough not, waters at all, except have, San Fran. And they got shocked by Arizona. Right, right. You know, and, and that was all prior to their bye. So, yeah, but that's a mental get this. That Arizona game tells you a little hey, the Arizona game is all you need to know about the Cowboys' mentality and their medal. They're not prepared every week. Mm. You think you hey, you look at look at the Jets loss versus the Arizona loss. I was just about to ask you about that. <laughs> what do you what do you think is the difference between those losses for, for both teams? Simple. It was self-inflicted. The other one, you got ran over. Mm. You weren't ready mentally. Interesting. Interesting. I think you're right, though. Um, See, look, this game on there's Sunday, a, there's two things. I'm look, I think they're in better shape. I have no question about them playing. I never had a question about their medal going into this game. I just don't have confidence in the defense. I've lost complete confidence and then being able to turn this thing around. They've got to get out of this web of rough seas here and get into the back end. Dallas is going into rough seas. They're not going to survive. They're going to take on a shitload of water. By the time, I'll tell you this too, if Dallas survives some of this, by the time they get to the postseason, they're going to be – with so much water on that boat, you're going to be even healthy, dude. You got, you got two giant games. You the got Cardinals an Arizona game. game. Yeah. You got three games against two teams that have already packed it in. Do you think? I'm looking. I'm looking at. I'm looking at the uh, the standings right now. Right. So Dallas is currently nine and three. They have five games left. And they all their losses are in the NFC uh, with the Eagles with two losses in the um, with with they have one loss in the NFC and they have one loss in the. They AFC. actually had they actually have three losses in it. All their losses have been in the NFC. Yeah, they lost so they're there. two games behind you on the tiebreaker. Correct, correct. So okay, um, even if you hey, even if you lose, 
You still, you still got him dead to right. You're still first place off the tiebreaker in the East. Exactly. Exactly. Now, here's the, here's the interesting part about this, too. And if they lose, the East is over. Exactly. So let's listen to this. They're nine and three, right? Yeah. So five, final five game stretch. I think realistically, I think realistically they go. Who they play next? So after the Eagles, they got Bills. Listen, they're, they're on the road. They're, they're on the road against the Bills. They're I think they. That. I think they lose that game. All their emotion and everything. That game that they play against you is going to be so pushed in for every. This is where the analytic guys in Philly might be right. Dallas is going to push every single thing in in this game to win this bitch on Sunday. Everything. You know what the Eagles aren't going to do? They're not risking hurts on RPOs. That's why mm. when you say establishing the run game, okay, Tone, give the ball 20 times to Swift. That's the limit they're going to do. Hurts is not going to be the number one ball carrier because if he is, I agree. that's a dangerous place to be when you don't need to put your team. Remember, this is about the war of attrition at the mm -hmm. end. Why I'm you don't need to put your team in that position right now when you have all the advantages over Dallas, even in a loss, you still have the advantages. Dallas, in my opinion, has to sell everything out. They've got to, and you know what's gonna happen? That team in Buffalo, who is just, I don't know, I think Sean McDermott needs to be fired, but that Allen guy is great, and it's at home. And that mafia is great up there. They're losing that game. Who do they play after that? After that, Dallas plays Miami on the road. They lose They'll that lose game. That They're down losing in that the game, South, in my opinion. Down in the heat at Miami? They're losing that game, in my opinion. Yes. Yep, at Okay, Miami. so they're going to have to go to South Florida, where right now it's 98 degrees, and they're going to go down there and play in that humidity down there after coming off of Eagles and Bills. And you're on the flying road. down to Miami. They're going from the coldest of the cold to the hottest, yeah. to the humid of the humid. And coming off also on the – see, they're they're going through the type of schedule. Let's see what kind of mans you are, and let's see what kind of team you are when you got to go through a gauntlet like you guys went through. So remember, hey, Dallas man. plays in the Dome. Dallas, they, 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 play, they play in the Dome, right? They've been home for three straight weeks against the Commanders, Seahawks, and Eagles. They've been sitting pretty. They're about to get tested. Who do they play after Miami? They put uh, their home against the Lions. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Take a look on at Monday the Lions. night. On Monday night. Take a look at the Lions games um, heading into that Dallas game, who they play. Heading who into Dallas. So, uh, babe, so they have, they're on the road against Chicago. Kill them. They're home against the Broncos. That won that game. They're on the road against the Vikings. They'll win that game. And then they're on the road against the Cowboys. Okay, those are all winnable games. Mm -hmm. Not crazy stretching out. Any I kind think of... the I think the Broncos push them. Okay, probably because there'll, there'll be a desperate Broncos team by then, mm -hmm. because of what happened to Pittsburgh last night. Yes, you know what you did. The Pittsburgh's loss made it so that the Texans, the Bills, um, the Bengals, those teams are still in it now, and they can make a noise. And so the Colts are still in that conversation down yep. there at that bottom end of that. So the Steelers brought a lot of teams in because if I'm not mistaken now, I, I wrote it down here. The Texans are in the seven hole and the Colts are in the six hole. Correct. And the Browns are in the five hole. I, I think, think the Browns, I think the Browns and the Steelers fall out completely. I think, I think Colts, Texans, and Broncos take over the five, six, and seven spot. Sounds hey, who would have thought Shane Steichen and um would have put the Colts <laughs> into the playoffs with, with really Gardner Minshew. Gardner Mitchell and not having Jonathan Taylor around a lot. That's that's insane. Man. Right. That's that. Hey, you can't think that that's not been missed in the Eagle huddle. Oh, absolutely. I think Shane, I think losing Shane Steichen was was the, was the, out of everything we've experienced this year. Losing Shane Steichen, in my opinion, was the was the large was the largest blow. You think he's the real head coach last year? I won't say the real head coach, but I think he's the real mastermind behind everything. You know, the, I, I think he's the real reason why Jalen Hurts took that step. You think it's the reason Jalen Hurts got two hundred fifty million dollars? Yes, yes, I'm willing to say that. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm willing to, I'm willing to say that. I don't you got to give it to Howie then for taking the play calling away from Nick and giving it to Shane because that was a brilliant stroke. Because what it did was it gave Jalen Hurts a place in the NFL as one of the 
best quarterbacks in the league. Mm. It made him a $50 million guy. And Tone, I loved what you said earlier. I thought what you said, you know, it's because you don't, you know, then you turn around and you start talking to me. I've never had a really great cheesesteak. I'm like, this guy was, he was born there. But I'm what the one thing, you, yeah, but I'm like one. this, I'm like, but then you turn around and you say this. I just don't think people give this team enough love for where they are. And that's why when I say this about the Niners, dude, mm -hmm. if the Niners don't win the Super Bowl this year, you got everything set up mm -hmm. for you. Quarterback making no money, defense, offense, everything. And you don't win it. I personally think the Eagles are playing with house money. And here's why. You're retooling your defense. Nobody goes back historically. They're 10 and 2 without a defense. Get this. 10 Think about and 2 that. without a defense. The last team to do this to go back to a Super Bowl after a loss, the Patriots. Okay. I mean, like the Patriots in like the early 2000s. Well, remember, they lost to the Eagles and they came back and beat the Rams the following year. Oh, that's right. That was what was that? Uh, that 17 was, that, and 18. 17 and 18. Yep. They lost to, yeah, they lost okay, to the Eagles and then they and came back and beat the Rams. Them. Yeah, and I, I believe that's, that's another conversation. But nonetheless, um, they're ten and two without a defense. Let's be honest about it. You know, so and this, you, you, you 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 laid it out perfectly, right? You laid it out perfectly earlier. They don't, they're ten and two. They don't have a defense. Um, uh, they're they're dealing with more injuries. The schedule's harder. New coordinators, new coordinators, new staff. Really, the only guys that are still on the, the only the only remaining guys were Nick Tracy Rocker. Um, Aaron Moore had a wide receiver and um Je and Jeff Stoutland. Other than yeah. that, everybody else is oh, and Kevin Patulo in, in the past game. But other than that, all everybody else is new. So so you 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 you're overcome, they've overcome so many things. You and you lost in the Super Bowl. You had the you had the longer season out of everybody, so your team isn't as rested as everybody else is. is you, aren't you, you more surprised? You, you go to the Super Bowl, you lose by three points, you come back and with a 10 and 2 record. Come on, man. Here, here, think, go with me here on this one. I, I'm not shocked where San Fran is. I'm shocked where the Eagles are because of history, right? Because yes. of everything that everything they've had to overcome. Which is why I say to myself, how can, how are people so comfortable being this dismissive of the Philadelphia Eagles? They're so comfortable, and I and it, 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 it's a Remember, shame. Tell they can't believe what they're seeing. And I spoke about this. They can't put a number on it. They can't quantify it. They can't. It goes against historical accuracy. And all they can do is say, well, they must be lucky. Well, instead, it's not luck. Instead of looking at the quarterback position and saying, well, maybe Jalen Hurts has elevated his game. Maybe he turned he's turned the ball over more, sure. But he's elevated his game in such a way where you put them in crucial situations, dire situations, and he elevates. And he plays a and he plays above the standard. You know what I'm he's saying? He's not on that team. You're a five win team. I, I I couldn't agree more. And get this, I couldn't agree more. And I'm and I would I'm not have said that. that. I would not have said that with Devontae, AJ, O line. I would not have said that before. Now you see it now. I see it now. You see it and now. I see what's going on in Los Angeles with the Chargers. They basically have almost the same type of personnel there. They got shitty coaching. They got shitty direction, and they have a quarterback who can't overcome um, dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying the Eagles are dysfunctional because they make ten times more moves than anything the Spanos family will ever yeah. do. However, here's here's a great here's a small example. Okay, so you, you cut you you cut Derek Barnett. Let's just pretend here for a second. Shits and giggles. Right. Derek Barnett underachieved. Okay, so you cut him, and sweats. Uh, play totals go up. How's that benefiting the defense when you don't have a proper replacement because you think your analytics department is better than your coaches? Didn't somebody step up and go, okay, we're going to release Derek Barnett. Okay, fine, no problem. Who are you putting in there to cover Sweat's snap, snap count? He's already played more plays than the entire 22 season. And that line of thinking is just sprinkled everywhere throughout the year and in the roster. The decision on Dean, the overpaying and keeping Slay, they should have cut Slay. 
They should have went with their gut feeling. Remember they remember the reports? You and I were going, how funny, Slay, Slay saying goodbye to everyone. The ESPN was reporting that they were going to waive him. All of a sudden, because of the Gardner-Johnson fiasco, they bring him back for, okay, corners are more important than slot corners. Doesn't seem to be now because we missed that six turnovers. Mm-hmm. I know that he has problems with fits. He's a playmaker, though. He's a playmaker, though. He's a playmaking guy, kind of like Diggs in Dallas was. Right. And the only thing I'll say about CJGJ is, you know, it's hard to kind of draw parallels between this, but him getting hurt in in Detroit, it's almost like, well, would that have happened in Philly? So it's kind of like, I know it's not fair to say because circumstances matter. And who's to say he would have got hurt or wouldn't have got hurt? But um, for shits and giggles, like you said, I mean, if let's say everything is the same, but he plays for the Eagles. That would be a that would have been terrible for the Eagles. They made that investment in him, and he got hurt like in the first two weeks, three weeks. Why did um, you bring in Chase Young then to replace Barnett? That's well, you know what he was. That was a trade. So you like okay? Do you, do, it was yeah, a trade. Do, I yeah, thought do, they released him. You're right. No, no, no. That was a trade. Oh, Randy Gregory. Um, I, I I actually wanted him. I wanted here. Him, here, but, think um, about this. Okay, yeah. so you get Barnett didn't he didn't play a ton of plays. But Nolan Smith is playing no plays. Right, you're not. And what yeah. you're doing is you're upping the volume of sweat. You know what I'm going to do if I'm Dallas? I'm going to run a Josh Sweat. And you know what I would do, honestly, at this point? Like, and it's not because he sucks. So he's tired. It looks. Here's the thing, right? I don't get. I don't give a damn how Nolan plays. Put him out there. Take some pressure off of Sweat. Get him out there. Put him in third and long. Who cares? Take some pressure off of Sweat. You got Sweat. Sweat has already played more snaps in 12 games than he played in 16 games last year. And it's affecting his sack totals and his pressures. Yes. He was a non-factor against Trent Williams. Not he was a like he he, he couldn't even he couldn't even he couldn't even turn the corner on him. Dude, That's how bad it was. They ran the ball five, six straight times at him because they knew. Get this, Tom. When you when you're an offensive coordinator, you look at snap counts. Yep. You look at fatigue. That's the shit I'm talking about. His hand was right on the tip all game. That's the stuff you look. Hey, how about this? Picking, that's a great can Milton Williams. Hey, can Fletcher get out there? I'd feel better putting Fletcher in a defensive end position on a short side, not to put him in the wide side of the field. You could situationally do that. You know what I'm saying, Tone? Or on the short side, have to have the sideline there and defend the sideline, put him on an end position just right. to give him some reps. Right, I'm right. saying this to you and, right now. And also if I'm if I'm the Dallas offensive coordinator or if I'm Mike McCarthy, I'm looking at the most vulnerable guys right now, and here's the most vulnerable guys on the Dallas defense. Clearly it's your – I here, Shaq Leonard's a good player. Okay, well, let's find out what kind of communication skills he has. That's got nothing to do with ability. That's right. everything to do with communication. So I'm going after him. Hey, um, Zach um, Cunningham has a hamstring. Yep. Okay, going to the let's, run, let's, let's run screens on him. Let's see if he can cover. Let's stress that guy out. Hey, Josh Sweat, how many plays? He's played his max from a year ago. Let's run right at him again. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do that. Let's put Zach Martin's ass over there and the left tackle, Tyron Smith, on him, and let's run the ball right at him. Right. I'm telling my, you, that's my how thing coordinators is like, look at it. Like Brandon Graham, like, like my thing is you can have Brandon Graham, right? Brandon Graham, is he's only playing about 25 30% of the snaps. Get him on the field some more. Yeah. Get him on the field. Yeah, like, but that's you, a calculation because he's old and they're trying to put him on a pitch count. Hey, you know what? You know what? Sweat is crazy? your best play. Sweat is your best your player. Perim- you your got perimeter guys. You don't have depth there. Sweat is your best player. You gotta get him some. Yeah. You gotta get him some leeway. You gotta get him some some rest. Isn't it? Oh, funny? Brandon Graham out there. That's listen. Twenty five percent of the snaps. That's that's nothing right now. Hey, hey, but it's a lot for a thirty six year old end. <sighs> yeah, I mean. I hear you. I hear you. Maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm not being Tony, nice. You're talking about, about a 36 year old guy like he's I 26. I, I know. I know. I know. I know. But uh, see, that's your heart talking again with them cheesesteaks. <laughs> 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 so wait, Graham's hey. played 30. percent He's only played 30 percent of the snaps. Right, 240 total snaps on the season. You don't think that's a lot for a 36 year old guy? I mean, 35 years old. But hey, who's counting? 35. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Fletcher's what, 33, 32? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Right, exactly. How many, how many percentages has, has he played? Oh, yeah, I was looking, I was looking at it up earlier too. Um, Fletcher Cox has played, I think he's uh 66 percent of the snaps. Let me double Holy check. Holy cow, that's really impressive. Yep. Yeah, Fletcher's at 66 percent of the snaps. Um, he's played 501 total snaps on the season. 
How many how um, many sacks? Uh on the season, Fletcher Cox has where are Two? we here? He has a grand total of oh wow. Okay. So on this season, he only has two and a half sacks on the season. That's all right. Two and a half sacks. Um, 13 quarterback hits, which which is only one less than he had last year. So he's getting there, but they're not they're not finishing the job. If he ends the season when he's next five with six sacks, let's just put there six sacks. Mm -hmm. 30, 32, 33 year old guy playing 66 percent of the snaps. If he can be five snaps, I'm five Dude, sacks. I'm good with he'd that. be your bestie tackle this year. Yeah, he plays the most out of all of them. He plays the most. Um, Jalen Carter now got the most talents, Carter. Right, right. But his motor, but, his motor isn't as high as Fletcher. But the but the guy being most productive, and I believe it or not, will be Fletcher. Agreed. Because uh, Jalen Carter right now, where is he as far as snap counts? Jalen Carter on the snap he's count. Running he, out of gas a little. He's fifty five percent of the snaps right now. How many four, sacks? With, with four hundred and eight total snaps. As far as sacks goes, Jalen Carter has four sacks on the season. Uh, seven Q, seven QB hits and six tackles for loss. It's great. Hey, do you resign Fletcher next year? I would. I'll find a way to get I, I would. Do you resign BG? Come on now. <laughs> I think I actually think I actually think this is BG last year. Like, and I I, I think Oh, you think that. it's uh, gonna be his call? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I think I think he knows this is last year. I think he knows that. If so, you had to keep one of the corners, who would you keep? I'm keeping Bradbury. I know he had a rough start, but I'm keeping Bradbury because he's a tad younger. Um, he has more new money left on the deal, so I gotta be careful with that. Yep. Whereas though Slay, he's more expendable to me because after this front year, ended, the they front ended the money. They front ended the money, so I think Slay is going to be gone after this year. Um, I think I, I think they draft the corner in the first round. Yeah, I, that I that's their number one priority is corner. In, in my opinion, I think corner needs to be number one priority. I wouldn't be surprised if they go corner in the first three rounds. Um, oh, like, I like to see corner edge. Or well, what I mean is, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they draft two corners within the first two rounds. I think, I think okay. they go, I think they go corner edge corner, safety, linebacker. Or, they, or I wouldn't be surprised if they do this corner edge O lineman. That's that, that that's on brand for them. That's so on brand for them. Yeah, um, I could hear. Tell me if you think this this sounds like them. Corner edge O line. Safety, safety, linebacker in the fourth. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that's 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 pretty spot on. That's pretty spot on. They're listen. They're not leaving this draft without two offensive linemen. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna get two. And I don't think they're leaving the draft without two corners. Agreed. I think though, I, I think they leave with two corners, two offensive linemen, um, an edge rusher, and a safety. That's where I'm at with it. How about the um, a tight end? Do you draft a tight end? Yes. What round? Third? Actually, no. Nah, I'll probably I'll probably draft one maybe fifth. Like fourth or fifth. Aren't you getting tired of not being able to count on Goddard every year? Yes, I am. I am. And um the fact of the matter is, talent aside, he has to stay healthy. And if he can't stay healthy, he won't get a second contract in the city. Or a third contract, rather. Because you know the rookie one counts. So he won't get a third contract in the city if he can't stay healthy. Um, I think uh he has what two years left on the deal, two two years maybe or something like that. So um I think they I think they should already be considering an, an, an exit strategy from that. What do they do at running back? Running Don't back you think they need a bruising back that yes. is more yes in a situation where instead of see, you know what you know what a novelty that McCaffrey is is that he's built like that, but he he runs in between the tackles like a bitch, and he runs like a – you know what he does, Tone, that's really unique and why mm -hmm. he's paid running back? He runs like a big man in between the tackles, and he catches the football like Alvin Kamara in the perimeter. I was and about I think to say, that's why he is so difficult of a cover. It, it, it's, it's his style of play. Yeah. He's a chameleon. He's built like, he's built like AP. He runs he, – he, he's built like AP. He moves, he, he he moves like a like a Todd Gurley in his prime, but catches like Marshall. It's weird. I think he runs like Emmett in there. It's so weird. Like, because you don't really see the big yards. You're like, 
10, 9, 7. But then he'll he break one, one off. He'll crack one for 20 or 30. He'll crack Yeah, one. he'll crack one off on you, man, and surprise you with his speed down. He is he is probably one of the more underrated players, and I think he probably gets that underrated tag a bit because he's hurt. He's hurt. There's, there's a history of missing games now. He's in a stretch now where he's been healthy, and yeah, I think that's healthy. got a lot to do with the play calling. With the mm. talent around him. Well, yeah, he has. He doesn't you know, have to be the guy. He doesn't have Carolina's guy. lack of talent around him and lack of play calling around him. Exactly. In Carolina, he was the offense, and that was the difference. And in in uh, in San Fran, he's in a situation where he's he's not relied on to be everything. You know who and, he really reminds me of now, Marshall Falk. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a much more physical Marshall Falk. He's a much more physical Marshall. That's how I look at him. Do you address the three wide receiver spot? Or is that important to them in this offense? Yeah, I, I was about to say I don't think that's something they're going to waste a draft pick on. If they, I think they're, I think they're more likely to free agent plug that with somebody. All right. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they bring back Ole Mide on a one year deal again. Oh no, I, I like that kid. Are yeah, you happy like him. with Cam Jurgens in the right guard position? Or is are, does the organization look at it like this? He's a plug and fill for now, but that's our future center, and yeah, we have I, to address I think, that. They are, they thought they did, maybe. Well, maybe well, Steve Landon, is that guy. Remember maybe when Steve. they drafted Landon? He was drafted to yep. be Kelsey's replacement, but then Kelsey came back and they moved him to the left guard. And they realized, okay, we're not moving him. He's, yeah, but he, Landon is six five. This guy's six right. two. He's right, a right, little, right. He's not so, quite as big. Right. So that's why it made sense for Landon to stay at left guard. But then Cam Jurgens, I I think I think they would prefer him to be safe, uh, prefer him to be a center. I think they I think that's their real preference. And then they put um, Steen at right guard. I think that's their dream scenario. I'm gonna throw something at you here that I don't know how people will respond, but uh -oh. let's just hypothetically say that. Hey, listen, we're having fun. We're having okay. fun. Let's do it. Let's hypothetically say this: Chicago moves off of Justin Fields. Okay. Would you be open to having Justin Fields as Hurts' his backup for a year? Let him watch how he plays. He signs him to a one-year deal. He's the backup. How he brings him in. If you're the agent, you put him behind Hurts. Let him mature. Let him grow. Get some decent coaching. And then off that one year, how he has a trade and a pick maybe that he can move. Remember, he was offered uh, – got he what was he offered? A third rounder from somebody for the uh, Gardner Minshew during the season last year? I think it was even the Colts that may have asked for I, – I thought somebody was requested Gardner Minshew. Would, do you think – because I don't think Jalen would have a problem with it. But no, maybe it, the perception it, 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 it wouldn't would affect be, him in any way. But. But, I don't, but I think the perception might – because you know this. Look, the guy loses a game. Tone – National media is going to go. Hurts played bad. This is why they got his replacement. You know, you know, you know what I mean. I, and it yeah, was I don't think a, a I don't think I, I don't think I would do it. Um, it 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 would mirror the Carson Wentz situation too closely. It would mirror it too closely. Um, I don't think they would do that. I wouldn't even do that. Here's uh, why I, I say this: if you're if you're Justin Fields, why do I want to go to Carolina? The only place that makes sense for me, if I'm Justin Fields, I think is Atlanta. Justin I, I was just about to say, I think Justin Fields ends up in Atlanta. Isn't he from down there? I'm, Didn't I he go know. to school at Georgia first, and then he transferred to Ohio State? Uh, I, I think I think he was at Georgia, then transferred. I Let thought he see. I thought he was at I thought he was at Georgia, and that's one of the reasons why. Yeah, yeah, he was. Joe he was at Burrow Georgia. left. Yep, is because he they they made a transfer move from him coming from Georgia to Ohio State. Correct. Yeah, he was at Georgia first, and he went to Ohio State. Yep. He may imagine him in Atlanta. Boy, and, and, that and might and look he is good. From he is from Georgia. He's from Harris. He he went to Harrison um, High School in Georgia. So um yeah he's 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 from uh he's from he's from he's born and raised in Kennesaw, Georgia. So yeah um I'm looking at I'm looking at his situation as they're they're, they're moving him. I don't care what anyone says. I, I think they're going to move him. And I think Atlanta is the perfect situation for him. He goes into he goes into a situation where he has a tight end. He has he has a receiver. Um, he has a running back. I would love to see Fields in Atlanta. Just see, just just to see how it would look. 
Holy shit, he's from Kennesaw, Georgia. A lot of gun racks in that damn place. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, even a guy like me would be afraid, man. <laughs> Too man. many. Hey, Big Sills doesn't go to cities that have a lot of cars with gun racks in them. <laughs> hey, dude, when I first got down to Atlanta, or when I first got down to Florida and I got down to the South, you know, I only read about shit. And I, 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 was, I was like this, Wounded Knee Creek, uh, Battle Creek Creek. Uh, General Lee, Robert E. Lee, tree. Listen, dude, before man, I, I tell you what, I was a little like, this ain't for me. Listen, <laughs> hey, man. Well, one last thing. I, had my, I was this. nervous about this. I got too. recruited to Ole Miss, right? And my granddad goes, "Hey, look at the look at a flyer here. They come running out. They don't do it anymore, but they used to come running out of the thing with the Confederate flag." And he goes, "Hey, man, that thing looks ray. wow. That you'd look good running behind that." I'm like. I ain't going anywhere near that. <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. You know, you know what's so crazy? Um, my first time coming to my first time visiting Texas was like in 2018, like 2018, 2019, something like that. And I was nervous as hell at first. And then, you know, moving down here, I was even more nervous. But then so so far, so good. No, good folks. Yeah, so far, so good. I I, I there is, I mean, I'm sure there's there's pockets of yeah. racism everywhere. Yeah. No, no, it's but everywhere. it's they're, they're good but folks. So far, I love living in I love living in Texas. Yeah, so far, I so far everyone is like really like really like you know helpful. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Every, so, everybody everybody's real chill. See, and laid Tones back. used to this. Hey, what time is it? Go fuck yourself. Hey, what time <laughs> is it? Well, it's, it's about my lunch time here, and it's twelve thirty five, youngster. I hope you have a good day. You're like, is there something Yo. wrong with me, or are you, or you know, because back Man. east you get this. My my wife will go like this. Goes, hey, excuse me, um, um, what time is it? The guy back east in Philly or New York, they'll go like this. What do I look like, Big Ben? Listen, I mean- <laughs> I, listen, listen. I'm at the airport, right? And me and my wife um accidentally sat in the wrong seat. Um, our our actual seats was you know right in front of the row we sat in, so we were just a row off. Um, so we sat in the wrong seats, and the guy walked up and he was like, hey, uh, he he had a Texas drawl, you know what I mean? He was like, hey, I, I think you guys are in my seat. And I was like, uh, I'm not sure. You, sh- you sure? He said, he said, he said, sure enough. So, so, so I looked up and I was like, oh, sorry about that, sir. You're absolutely right. He said, oh, no, no worries, young man. This is no big deal. These, these planes are confusing anyway. Don't worry about it. I'm like, okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just nice. Like, just a nice dude. I'm like, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I, one thing about Texas, I met my old lady in Texas. And I'll say this to you, man. I've never met, seen hotter chicks in my life. I go up to a McDonald's drive through I'm like, you're kidding. You know, these beautiful Mexican women, you're like this. Damn. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, my wife is originally from Georgia, so I got me a little southern chick myself. Oh, very nice. And uh, you know, I you know, I I'll tell you this about Texas and I'll and I'll leave it here. Everything's <laughs> everything's bigger. <laughs> 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 everything's bigger <laughs> it certainly is that's a, that's a fact man, oh, man. That, hey oh my hey, god everything. ego hey egos and booties <laughs> <laughs> hey you said it not me you said I it did. not me i i did <laughs> hey you put that eagle flag out front of your house you know what's so crazy i don't have an eagles do i have an eagles flag i don't think i have an eagles flag um actually i do i do but um hey, i might i might keep that one hidden <laughs> You know what's so crazy? On my block, Steelers fans. Because Get you know, out. yo, seriously, because like I'm I'm in a military area. So like okay. so like literally Steelers fans and Tennessee Titans fans, Giants fans. I haven't really come across I, I see them when I when I'm out and about. And every time I see a every time every time I see a Cowboys fan, I just want to I just want to walk up to him and say, So uh this so uh this year's your year, huh? <laughs> this year, you're, you're, you're an Eagle fan. It's <laughs> <laughs> only Eagle fan asked that question to Cowboy fans. Because you Eagle fans will always do this. You really think this is the year? <laughs> See, you don't really ask a question. It's more of a prophetic statement. You'll do this. Th- I've noticed Eagle fans will do this. You don't really think you're going to win it this year, do you? It's more of a statement question uh-huh. than it is a question. Man, I tell you this. I was in the gym, and I saw this. I saw this San Fran fan, and this is prior to the game. He had he was decked out San Fran hat, San Fran shirt, San Fran shorts, red sneakers. He was he was he was he was blood red, head to toe. And I was so close to saying, "So, uh, y'all think y'all got this one, huh?" 
but I'm glad I bit my tongue on that one because <laughs> <laughs> we got our ass whooped. So I'm glad I walked. I'm glad. I, I'm glad my pride was to the side on that one. I, I left that one alone. I left I that one like, alone, man. As you guys know you don't really have game day food, right? Okay, you guys eat wieners on toothpicks. <laughs> Anybody who eats wieners on a toothpick, little wiener dogs, and you get served wine in white wine spritzers, dude. Listen, that's man. not a ball game. Listen, that's more man. of a hoedown. <laughs> Philly man, you got cheesesteaks, pizzas, hoagies, beer, you yeah. know, liquor right there. You know what I mean? You got wings. Yeah. How good is how how good are the Eagle uh tailgates? Sills. You gotta go to one. See, that's a that's a bucket list thing for you me. gotta go to one. Everybody yeah. feeds everybody. You can't yeah. walk 10 feet without somebody offering you a beer or something or throwing a football at you. Like yeah. it's, listen, man, the vibes are always electric. Everybody is just loud, rambunctious, music playing everywhere. Everybody tossing the football. So many grills going, fires over here. And, you know, people just got the cheese steaks and they got the big ass grills with the, not just, not just your, not just your, uh, your regular grill. At the bocce's like, going? I'm talking, I'm talking about the barrel grills, the ones that are oh, homemade. The barrel grill. Yeah. Like you see people out there with the, you see, you, you see big old, like, like school buses painted midnight green and like, bro, just light shows, man. It gets it, and, and you, know, you know, I heard I heard them tailgate parties, man, are in Philly. I heard that you could have doctors and lawyers and just regular old folks, and everyone's painted up, nobody knows anything different, everyone's the same. Listen, and when you down there, everybody's family. When you yeah. down there, everybody is family, Sills. I'll tell you that right now. You can't they walk told me it's the home of the Abachi. Listen. <laughs> You walk down there, all you gotta do is say, "Let's go, birds!" All of a sudden, people just go crazy. Ah, they throw you a beer and all that kind of shotgun and beer. Listen, it gets, it gets raw, it gets raunchy at, at, at Philly uh, tailgate. What's what's funner, the tailgating or the game itself? The tailgating easily. <laughs> tailgating you easily. didn't even question that. The tailgating, because 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 when you get in the game, everyone kind of like everyone kind of just like puts on like that that mask. Like, all right, it's it's, it's time it's, it's time to go to work. You know what I mean? You would think that we're playing. <laughs> you would think that. <laughs> All right. I got to ask you one last question here. Are you going to be more? I heard you yesterday. Uh, I think you said something like this. Yeah, when I wash my car, change my muffler, put a tire in the trunk. During the fourth quarter, man, I was I didn't even want to see. I, I, oh, I yeah, love yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking when about. When my yeah. teams get beat, somebody told me because my Kane's got, team got beat years ago. Someone goes, what'd you do? I went, I went and washed my fucking car. I'm not watching that shit. Yo, That's not going to be something you're right. I'm sitting around watching. You, you, you're half right. Basically, uh, I'm, I'm I'm watching this ass whooping, and I say to myself, you know what? I'm going to go do a little laundry, going to make some dinner. You know what I mean? I'm going to go to fold this, going to do that. I'm walking around the house doing anything but watch the screen. <laughs> doing everything. How nervous are you going to be, Cowboy? Um, has this been a weird Cowboy week for you? It's, it's been a weird Cowboy season. Um, the, the first matchup was even kind of strange. Um, but still, I, I was confident through and through. Whenever we're in Dallas, it feels everything just feels off. It just if it just feels off, you know. But I'm confident in this game, you know. We we don't we don't beat them twice in a year often, but I'm pretty confident in this game because um I think the Eagles are going to be capable of elevating their game in that matchup specifically because of how things went in the previous week. I think this is a big week for everybody involved. I think Jing, did you hear? I didn't get a chance to ask you this. I know we're running out of time. <laughs> did you hear what, what is, what is his name? David Carr, Derek Carr from NFL. Did you hear what he said David about Carr. David? Did you hear what he said about Hertz? He doubled down on it too, saying that he doesn't think that Hertz is healthy and that he should, uh, they should pull him. And put Mariota in, and that but, gives but him a better he's, chance. He, listen, he's trying to spin it. He talk. He's talking at healthy angle. This dude had the nerve to say, "Yeah, I think uh, I, I think this offense will function way better with Mariota." You know uh, what? What are we talking about, man? They're just giving anybody a job these days. Like, come on, I would take a sixty percent Hertz than a hundred percent Mariota. Are you smoking crack? Who was the quarterback from North Carolina that after they yanked him, him being a number one overall pick, won a division title, and he was a stiff? I forget who that was, and he he was a North Carolina quarterback, and he was upgraded to to, to David uh, to a uh, car. He was an upgrade, man. I'm, I'm gonna find out. Yeah, let, yeah, because 
this guy is just talking nonsense. So, because David Carr went to Fresno State. So, yeah, they both cars did. Okay. So, yeah, the, the, I think he won a division title with Bill O'Brien. Who Let's was the guy that. that won that division title uh, prior to uh, the show? Oh, are you, are you talking about Matt Schaub? Yep. Matt Schaub. There was another guy before him, too. The Texans. Let me see. Texans quarterback history. I, I'm fine at it. I, I want that. Yeah, yeah, because he, he's, a, he's a stiff nobody. And he won a division. He won a division title there. And everyone was like, Bill O'Brien won a division. I think this is when they had Clowney down there. And Clowney and they had TJ Watt or um, they had Watt, JJ Watt. Let's see here. All right. Was it okay? So Matt Shaw was there from 2007 to 2013. Was it Brock Osweiler? Was before that. Okay, before that, before David Carr. So we're talking TJ Yates. TJ Yates. TJ Yates. Yes, here it is. 2011 and two. Yep, yep, yep. You're right. You're right. Because our car was there. TJ Yates won a division title. TJ Yates. Had a better career than Carr did in Tex with the Houston Texans. TJ Yates. TJ Yates. Way to go, Keon. TJ Yates. <laughs> that is insane. TJ Yates. He won, he won a division title, right? So TJ Yates um says okay, he only had 10 starts with the uh with Houston. I thought he finished it up and they won the division with oh, him. Okay, after. okay, he probably finished it up because he was there. TJ Yates was in there 2011, 2015, and 2017. David Carr was there from 2002 to 2006. Okay. So you sure you're not you sure you're not thinking of all right Tony Banks, Dave Ragone? No. Uh I thought not... Yates well, I thought Yates won a um I thought Yates finished up and they won a title, like a division title in oh, Okay. Okay, Yates, okay, Yates did get them to the playoffs in 2011. You're right. Okay. You're right. Yep, it says here. It says it says due to injuries to both starting quarterbacks, Matt Schaub and backup quarterback Matt Liner during the 2011 regular season. Matt Liner. Uh TJ Yates became the starter for the rest of the season as well as the playoffs. <laughs> Bill O'Brien, baby. Oh, no, my great God. stuff, man. I tell you what, this is gonna be an interesting ball game on Sunday. It's gonna be fun, man. I'm excited for it. Okay, we got the Philly Godfather 532. Hey, Tone's got very interesting. Behind the scene and behind the curtain messages too. I have to go let's that listen, segment. man. So, I, listen, I have a I'm lot sure of respect. It'll be very entertaining. Thank you so much, Tom. I, I, really I got awesome a lot of respect for the Godfather. Too, I'll leave man. it at Thank that. Thank you, my friend. Yes, sir. You got it. Don't forget on Saturday, from three thirty to five thirty, Big Seals will be out at King of Prussia. We invite you to come on out. We're giving Eagle tickets away for the Christmas Day game. We got jerseys to give away. We've got merchandise to give away. Come on out. Have a great time with us. We really appreciate you guys. Don't forget, Wing Wednesdays, 1983. Go to northeasttutors.com, northeasttutors.com. Can't wait to see it. We're going to take a look at week 14 of National Football League, a little more in this Cowboy Eagle game. Philly Godfather is going to join us at 530 Eastern. Keep it here on the National Football Show. and Hooters, the perfect pair.
If you own a company and you're not producing a podcast, you're missing out. The public consumes messaging when they're ready. Join the professional podcast network of companies and let Jacob Media Partners put you in the podcast arena. Come to our professional studio or we'll come to your place of business and professionally produce your company podcast. Call Jacob Media right now at 267-261-3428. 267-261-3428. Any professional sports coach will tell you there's no substitution for preparation. At Malamut & Associates, that is a tenet by which we live. We prepare from day one for victory. Anything less is not acceptable. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their fantasy pick em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Godfather has, holy cow. By the way, he's going to be out there on Saturday. Let me show you this, man. This is what he does. Look at, look at, oh my God. At Dan Cilio show. He's got Ice Cube in there too. <laughs> hey. Yeah, dropping my boy Ice Cube too. How you doing? Holy cow. That's there for you. Okay, I can't believe I gotta I gotta show Cube that. Got it officially off the injury report. He's a go for the cowboy game. Yeah. Mm. Heart, hustle, guile. Toughness. This is what it's about. This is what I'm talking about. This is going to be battle at the OK Corral known as Jerry's World. Look at Tone, man. This dude's hyped and ready to rock. You got that right. No guts, no glory. Damn straight, dog. You know, good thing about sports. No politics, no bullshit. No moving the sticks. Scoreboard. Scoreboard. That's why we love sports, man. Ain't no moving the chains. Well, he played good in the loss. No, he didn't. Jalen was really great. Every time I hear somebody say that, you have to be a Republican or Democrat and a political hack that anybody who thinks that coming in second place is a good thing. Like Ricky Bobby would say, okay? You ain't first, you're last. Iconic movie. Iconic movie. Look at Keon there, man. 10 and 2. Killed. Isn't that crazy? Awful to do to him. Twist. 10 and 2. Killed. RTF. 10 and 2. Killed. Yeah. Killed. They shot that thing in three quarters, man. They took care of you in three quarters. They didn't even play the first quarter. They kicked the shit out of you up and down the field in your own backyard. 
you know what they did? They moved the clothesline, and then they killed you in a game of touch football or tackle football in your backyard. Damn. <laughs> At least in my backyard, we had the hedges, home runs, and the wiffle ball were on the top of the roof, and the sandbox was a triple. They didn't need any of that shit. They just kicked your ass. There you go, five star. It happens. It does. It's the NFL. Teams get killed. He's the first guy that has said that and went, okay, we got killed. Next. That's right. That's right. Does anybody pay a hey, hey, Yale? Does anybody play wiffle ball anymore? I loved wiffle ball. Cunningham and Shaq to start. Two guys. Get this. This is a really great Rocky story. I'm going to play Rocky here as Zach Cunningham and Shaq Leonard. I'm just, I'm a bum. I'm really nobody. You know, I'm a ham and egger. I've been cut. You know, now I'm starting. How would you like to start on the defending NFC champions team playing the Cowboys on Sunday? No. What do you mean, no? It's a chance of a lifetime, Rock. It's the chance of a lifetime. You can't pass it by. Okay. <laughs> Dude, that's quite a story. And if your football team doesn't finish the deal this year, blame your GM. You'll be 100% to blame. Quarterback won't. Coordinators won't. Be, this falls on Howie. If you don't win a Super Bowl this year or get to it, I'm blaming Howie Roseman 100%. Because the miscalculations compared to a year ago, some of them are awful. Three guys you got on your football team were cut at linebacker. That's your linebacking pool? No disrespect to those men. I got great respect for people who get an opportunity to play again. It's really not on the players. You have no depth at the, at the edges. Josh Sweat has already played more snaps this year than he did in the entire 2022, including the playoffs and Super Bowl. How do you justify that? That's a good one. Senor goes, all the blame and all the glory. And get this, here would be, here would, he, here will be my arguments why Roseman is to blame for this team's lack of success. If there is some, you can't say it now, but bullshit coordinators, bullshit analytics department, retooling of the players at certain critical positions, devaluing certain positions. You had as bad a year this year as you did great year in 22. A and 22, F. No, because Carter doesn't make it an F. D. This is all on him. Now, 10 and 2. Let's see it play out. This guy's either going to be a hero or a goat in my book because I don't think there's any common ground in the middle. Hey, he was okay. Shit, what are you doing here? Okay. Who plays to be okay? You Hey, you clearly miscalculated on Slay. Paying him, you should have cut him. Drafted. You know what you should? Here, here's what I would have done. Tone and everyone, I don't know if you guys agree. But... I wouldn't have drafted Nolan Smith with 31. I'd have moved up and got a corner in the first round instead of an edge and moved off a of slay. I would not have passed up Jalen Carter at nine. So, no. As good as the kid Witherspoon has played and the kid that was up in New England who got hurt, those two guys were good, Gonzalez, okay? 
31, or I would have traded out of 31, went into the second, okay, and got a corner in the second and maybe picked up some additional draft picks where I could have got an edge in the second as well and and trading out. The not re-signing of Edwards is turning out to be a colossal disaster. Shit, man. The the, the non-re-signing of Kaiser White's turning out to be a bad move. Well, I, I, I don't have a problem moving off of White. Well, he's better than anything you have in your team now. I mean, you, you, you could say all you want. You could, well, you know, I'm all right moving off Kaiser White. Really? Well, who's your replacement? Guys who were cut. Ringo's a frustrating pick. Him and Nolan Smith are frustrating. Those are frustrating picks because they're non-factors. Now, has your special teams improved? I guess that's a okay move. Um, the Georgia experiment stopped at Carter. I don't know. Because Jordan Day was was average last year and he came into his own. Guys cry too much? No, they're close, that's why. You cry when you're close, you don't cry when you're far away. Like Dallas. You don't you don't cry when you're far away. You moan when you're close and you missed an opportunity. And with a tougher schedule, we have same record as last year. At this point, we'll see. We'll see. You're losing in Dallas. The, dude, the worst thing, please, God, don't let them get blown out in Dallas. Whew. That's right, Yale. Don't get, if you get blown out in Dallas, you know what that'll tell me? If you get blown out in Dallas, you're out of gas. and Your defense is unreliable. Nothing to do with your offense. Hey, don't get pissed off for a team. That averages 27 points a game. And it's 13th in passing. You shouldn't get mad at that. That's nothing to get mad at. Where you get pissed off is 24th in points allowed and 29th in pass defense. That's where you get pissed off because the team wasn't retooled correctly. Get this. Every single media person in Philadelphia and many of you in here, just like Keon, thinks that Howie Roseman did a brilliant job in the offseason with the bullshit Selections of Rashad Penny, um, name it. Some of the people that they've brought in. Where's your depth at end? Who, who okay, outside of Josh Sweat, who's your best end? Who's your second best end? Is it me? Why don't they put a premium on defense in Philly? We're a place that was. One of the most signature and iconic men and an awards named after him and one of the greatest players in the history of the National Football League. You know, you guys have had in the last 75 years two of the greatest football players that have ever lived that were defensive players, not offensive players. Your greatest football players are defensive guys. Reggie White and Concrete. Bednarik and White are your two greatest players. And why does this organization devalue the defense so much? Yeah, I get that, Yale. All their investment go in the, in the D lines and in, and in the O lines. I get that. But just colossal failures at edge. They found sweat in the fourth. Great. I think they do a better job 
actually in later rounds than they do in the top premium rounds when it comes to selecting defensive players. Horrific in linebackers. I can't remember the last time you drafted one. That was worth a shit. When's the last? Hey, let me ask the last. Let me ask this one question again. Who? What's Howie's greatest uh, corner draft? That's a good. I like that exercise. What's What's Howie's? Who's Howie's greatest um, corner that he drafted? Who's his greatest corner? Kendrick? He doesn't have one. None of them are even here. Okay? Let's not belabor that then. Who's the greatest edge rusher he's ever drafted? Pass rusher. Sweat. Okay. Heck of a ball player. Um, who's the best linebacker he's ever drafted? I'm waiting. Kendrick? Hicks? How long ago was it? Edwards was not drafted? UDFA. So he hasn't had. He hasn't he hasn't drafted a linebacker and corner since he's been the general manager of the Eagles. Would you constitute those as premium positions? It just seems to me there's just a lack of focus on that side of the ball when it comes to building. They would rather build it through one-year deals, analytical department. The analytics department, personnel-wise, does more on defense in pro personnel than they do. I wonder if that's philosophy as well. Because it's mostly spare parts on defense. I mean, your best player is Hassan Reddick on defense. And he's not homegrown. He's not homegrown. Your corners aren't homegrown. Half your safety positions um, are not homegrown. Your linebackers are not homegrown. Your edge rushers are, and your tackles are. Fundamentally, that's their mentality. That's why when Tone was putting together the draft, this is who they are, and this is how they move. They move like that. See, in San Francisco, priority is up and down the lines in each level. D-line. Now, you're afforded that with not paying a quarterback. D-line, linebacker, and secondary. They value defense in San Francisco more than they do, and that's why their defense is better than yours, hands down. Okay? That's why they value that more. How he values his picks more because the analytical department values those picks because that's their hard work. Now you see why they keep guys like Jalen Rager and Derek Barnett and Andre Dillard on the team longer because the front office and the analytics guys picked them, not the coaches. Makes sense now. Because they think in their mind or reasoning that over a period of time, they're going to come around. I, you know, if you're if you're drafted by the Eagles, you have a shot to make the team and stay on it for five years and get a pension. It's pretty good, whether you're good or not. It doesn't matter. They basically gave Jalen Rager an NFL career, and he doesn't deserve one. How long do they keep him on the team? How long do they keep Rager on the team? Three years? That guy doesn't deserve to have a pension. Okay, he, he's been a colossal disaster. 
but they kept him on the team for three years. Was it three years? Yeah, yeah. I think New England moves off their guys quick, but again, they have done a pathetic job when it comes to drafting. Pathetic job. How long? How long was he? How how long was he on the three years? Was Jalen Rager? Right, because I'm talking about the first rounders. And you know, hey, you know, there's a part of me that says that's pretty cool in a way that they keep their guys. Uh, San Francisco doesn't prioritize quarterbacks. Um, you don't think spending three first rounders on a quarterback is prioritizing? Two years, he didn't make it to the roster the third year. That's right. They traded him right to the Vikings. Was that that deal? They traded him for a seventh to Minnesota, and I think he's on the active roster in New England right now, if I'm not mistaken. That's four years. So two years. They cut him before the third year. Okay. Okay, two years. He's probably on the well, – they got him off the roster. I, I don't know. That's probably about right. That's probably about right. Two years, give him a shot. And then the third year you move them because you don't – that's probably – that's that that's not fair. So probably they did that right. They did that right with Rager. Two years and then move them in the third year. You know, he, he got a seventh rounder for him, showed you exactly what people thought of him. Complete, at, at least he got out of there. So that's okay. Okay. Let's see here. Um. And, and yeah, no, no, that's probably right. They drafted Rager over Ayuk. Hey, dude, I'm sorry. I didn't see Brandon Ayuk turning out to be uh, somebody special like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That kid is a good ball player. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you probably thought Cooper Cup was going to be a superstar too. Or A.J. Brown in the second. Or Devontae Adams in the second. 65% of all the all-pro wide receivers were drafted in the second round. Do you know that? Most of the big stars over the last five or six years have been all-pro that were – they were drafted in the second round. They weren't first-round draft choices. Okay? Yeah, but he got Devontae right. As far as I'm concerned, you keep taking swings and you land on Devontae – I was wrong about Devontae. I got some prop bets I want to hit on. I want to look at week 14. The greatness of the Philly Godfather. My God, did you see that money? And that stack of money he had that he's been winning and making and placing bets. You got to see it, man. He's just going like this. It's really dope. Absolutely great. We're going to help you make some money. Power Hour coming up on a football Friday. We'll reset. Keep it here on the National Football Show. and Hooters, the perfect pair. If you own a company and you're not producing a podcast, you're missing out. The public consumes messaging when they're ready. Join the professional podcast network of companies and let Jacob Media Partners put you in the podcast arena. Come to our professional studio or we'll come to your place of business and professionally produce your company podcast. Call Jacob Media right now at 267-261-3428. 267-261-3428. 
Any professional sports coach will tell you there's no substitution for preparation. At Malamut & Associates, that is a tenet by which we live. We prepare from day one for victory. Anything less is not acceptable. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. like that <laughs> a lot of crying so jordan phillips of the bills calls jason kelsey soft i eh, wouldn't go there with that he was a dirty player in that game i went back and watched some of the film of that game he's a dirty player he is hey did you guys enjoy bailey zappy and uh mitchell trubisky last night <laughs> Oh my God, Mitch! Hey, Mitchell Trubisky versus Bailey Zappi last night. Holy shit! I was like, "This is a preseason game. Is it? Is this preseason football?" Bailey, hey, how would you like to have a Bailey Zappi? Is that on the rocks? How would you like to have a Mitchell Trubisky? Am I being sued? <laughs> mm. He called. Why would you call Jason Kelsey out? Yeah, why would you call Jason Kelsey out? I mean, seriously, win a game, dude. You're 500. You start talking bullshit about a guy. And, I mean, come on now. This is an MVP game for Jalen Hurts. Can Jalen Hurts put himself back in the MVP race tonight? I don't know. Unfortunately, the media doesn't respect your guy. 11. Stop thinking with your heart. Think like those losers. Do you believe Jalen Hurts can win the MVP? How about this? Do you think Jalen Hurts can ever win the MVP and the only MVP he'll ever win is a Super Bowl MVP? I have no idea how Lamar Jackson won that MVP in Baltimore. Man, he, then again, that 1,400 yards, man, he was, didn't he throw 30s? That was, was, was it the two, the three significant numbers? Help me out on that tone. Wasn't it 14 and two? That team went 14 and two. He threw for 36 or seven touchdown passes, which led the league. And he ran for 1,400 yards. So those three things kind of like probably stood out the most. Because I only think he threw for like 3,107 that year when he won unanimously the MVP. Hey, Brock Purdy and um, Dak look like the MVPs right now. Correct. He didn't throw for over 3,300 yards. Past. Right. It had to have been that. I, I, I could be giving him more credit. I thought it was like maybe 1,400 yards. Maybe it was 1,105 that he ran for. Um, but he threw for 36 or seven touchdown passes and led the league. And I don't even think his completion percentage was very good that year. But he won it unanimously. I have no idea. You had Breeze and Brady 
and Rodgers and Manning still in the game then. And Mahomes. You had all those guys still in the game, and he won unanimously that year. Yeah, I, I and plus it was the fourth. I think it was the fourteen and two. Okay, I think it was. I think it was the the fourteen and two. Purdy is plus three fifty, and Hertz is three hundred. The f you talking about? Yeah, yeah, he'll never win it. Even if he wins. Dude, they gave Dak Prescott more love in a loss than Hurts beating him. That's what I'm talking about. How is Dak Prescott to LJ? Goes, what are you talking about? Okay. How is Dak Prescott and Brock Purdy? He forgot to put Dak in there too. Because he's being an asshole. He forgot to put Dak's name up there too next to Purdy's name. How in the world is Dak ahead of Jalen Hurts in the MVP race? How in the world when Jalen Hurts has beaten all these guys? Here's what I think. If Jalen's going to win the MVP, got to throw for about 400 yards four touchdowns blow out the Cowboys go in the road to Seattle throw for 350 and he could pretty much coast home there you go Sorry, LJ, once again. Lying like a rug. That's right there, baby. He's even with Jalen. How? How? Oh, I thought Jalen beat him. I thought Jalen beat him. Tell me, how is Dak Prescott having the same odds as Jalen Hurts winning the Super or winning the MVP award. How? Give me one moment this year where you went, yeah, he he had a significant win like Jalen. Where? Come on, LJ, help us out here. Come on, you pancake-eating son of a bee. Come on, you pancake-eater. Say it with me. Thank you, Tone. Dak Prescott has not put anything on paper. How about this? Let's be more fair to this. He has not put anything on a football field that constitutes anything that Jalen Hurts hasn't superseded him on. If Dak Prescott had beaten the teams that Jalen has beaten, Dak Prescott would be the runaway MVP. Am I lying? Triggered, LJ. You're assuming that I get upset by you. That's quite a reach. There's actually two people that upset me. My kid, my old lady, and my aunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I don't really get upset. And a bad waiter, probably. <laughs> yeah. Seals, do you think Reich won't be welcomed back because of analytics exposure? No, he knows how the Eagles are run. He'd be totally welcomed back. They love Frank Reich. And a rugby, oh, Jesus, Tone, you son of a B. A rugby ref. Yeah, I'm not going to be invited to any Christmas carols with her. That's for sure. I almost got put in a timeout in that thing. <laughs> that wasn't good. Still, San Francisco wants to help Dallas. What does that tell you? San Francisco wants to help Dallas in what way? Giving them a game plan? 
whatever Dallas does. Like I told you, here, once again, media loves Dakota. No, they love covering the Cowboys, good or bad. Anthony, here's why they love the Cowboys. They love to hate them or they love to love them, but they love to cover them because they get more clicks, more people follow them. The owners on twice a week in Dallas, they don't cover the Dallas Cowboys because they win. They cover the Dallas Cowboys because they're popular. It's the only reason. You don't cover a team that hasn't won shit in 30 years. I mean, who covers a team that doesn't win? Unless they're popular. Okay? You wait! Dakota Prescott. Yes, sir, boy. Ryan Johnson's got to be proud of him. Help develop him. Isn't that funny? He helped develop that guy at Mississippi State into a $50 million quarterback and an MVP candidate. And he's got two guys that he helped develop as youngsters as an MVP candidate. Okay? Uh, Dakota picks, picks a lot. Neil, your guys got more picks than him this year. Be careful there with that stat. Your guys trending to have a shitload more picks. Oh, look, the MVP, it's a popularity contest stats. <laughs> Here, let's do this. And then I'm going to get my guy who has a ton of cash on him, the greatness of the Philly Godfather. We're going to look at week 14 with him. Devontae Smith, Sunday, versus the Cowboys, over under 58 and a half yards receiving. In Dallas. Devontae Smith, over under 58 and a half yards. Way over, easy over. How many yards did he have in the uh, first Cowboy game? Did he have 100? I thought both of those guys had 100 yards in that game. Didn't they, didn't they have the, um, both of them have over a hundred or was it, or was it just Devante? Ninety nine. I think that's a hundred. That's cool. So he had a hundred yards in that game. Okay. Jake Ferguson over under 47 and a half yards. Devontae had 51 yards in a TD last Cowboy game. Ooh. So he was under 58 and a half. Ah. So he was over. What will I say? I say Devontae's over that. I'm taking the over. Jake Ferguson, over under 47 and a half yards. In this game on Sunday. Isn't that kind of right down the number Kittle had? Against the uh against the Eagles? I think Ferguson's gonna be over that. I actually think personally, I think they're gonna target him and try to get him established more than C D first. C.D. Lamb, over under 90 and a half yards. Had 191 last time he played you. C.D. Lamb gets 100 over, over 90 yards. Over. 
So Devontae Smith over, Ferguson over the 47 and a half, CD over a, over 90 and a half. Does Swift get over 50 and a half yards rushing? Who's Roby? Who's Roby? Is he one of them superstars on your defense? Who's Roby? Under. You think Swift goes under? If Swift goes under 50 and a half rushing yards, you're getting murdered. Tone, does he go under or over 50 and a half yards? If he doesn't get more than 50 and a half yards, you're getting killed. You better hope that number, you better hope he goes way over. Has to go over. Has to. Hey, I'm going to say it's going to go over because I think they're going to overload him in this game. Like, I think if, would we not agree that DeAndre Swift has to have over 20 carries in this game? Don't you agree? He has to have over 20 carries in this ball game here. Over. I'm taking the over for Swift. I don't know what his yards per carry will be, but he's got to be over, man. Dallas Goddard. 45 and a half. Over, under. I do not want to see Kenny Gainwell. Please, God, don't give that guy carries. I please don't give Kenny Gainwell carries. Please. It's waste of carries. It's waste of reps. I don't want that guy getting carries. Kenny Gainwell. You think Dallas Goddard coming off of the IR with a broken forearm has over 45 and a half? I think he's over. Tony Pollard. Over 56 and a half rushing yards. Philly Godfather is going to join us in a couple minutes. Tony Pollard has under 56 and a half. When you've been averaging 160 yards rushing or 150 yards rushing the last three weeks. I think Tony Pollard's going to have more rushing yards. I think he goes over. Now, here we go. Jalen Hurts. Let me drop this number down. Now bring this one up here a little bit. Jalen Hurts, over 235 yards passing. Over or under? Over or under, Jalen Hurts, 235 yards. Yards passing. Over. Under. 21 to 28, 255 and two touchdowns. I think he has to be over. You can't think that Swift is under 50 yards rushing and Hertz is under 230 yards passing. You're going to win. It's got to be over. Push. You're doomed. Because then you got to rely on your deep. Think about what some of you are saying in here. You're not listening to what I'm saying here. You think most of you have thought that Swift is going to be under 50 and a half yards rushing. 
and Hertz is going to be under 235 yards passing, you're doomed. Where are you getting your offense from? You can't win. Dak Prescott, over under 245 at home versus that defense. Prescott, 475. <laughs> the thing the, that's a blowout if he does that. So it has to be over if Hertz is under. That that's right. That's right. I think you both have to be. I think the Eagles have to get over 50 and a half yards rushing from Swift. You've got to be over 235 yards passing to have a shot in this game. I think Prescott's over too. I think so. Get this. Okay. Tony Pollard, over 56 yards rushing, and Dak, over 250. And some of you are saying in here, Jalen, under 235, and Swift, under 50 yards rushing. It's a blowout. Even your own common knowledge here of what you're doing. Where are you getting the game from? Your defense? This is why I think you're in trouble Sunday. 245 is low. When's the last time Jalen Hurts threw for 300 yards? And I mean meaningful, not that mop-up bullshit we saw in the Niner game. When was the last game he did that? Was it Dallas? Did he do what, what did did he throw for 300 in the Dallas game? I thought he threw for 317 in the Dallas game. I might be wrong. It, it, I thought he threw for 300 yards in one of those games over the last couple. Washington, was it? That's the last time he's thrown for 300 yards was in Washington. He threw for 298 against the Niners, but that thing it was like Kirk Cousins 298. If they don't run the ball – Fans will show up at the Novacare Center with bricks in them pockets. It won't, yeah, it won't be run the ball signs. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I don't think he, Chris, I don't think he threw for 300 yards against the Bills. I don't think so. He had 200 versus Dallas. Okay. We are going to see more Eagle fans crying Sunday night. I don't think Eagle fans were crying. I think Eagle fans were shocked what came out of Sunday. You don't cry when you're 10 and 2. You cry when you haven't been to a Super Bowl in 30 years. Does that make sense? Hey, hey, cowboy guys, let's get what crying means, really. Eagle fans aren't crying at 10 and 2. You cry when you haven't been to a Super Bowl in 30 years. That's when you cry. <laughs> Damn. I thought we had the team. I know you did. <laughs> okay. I know you did. God, we don't have the team. Oh, Jesus, grab me. How many years? It's 30 years now we've been doing this. I mean, seriously, it's like Groundhog Day. That must be the a, a tone. That must, everyone, that must be the Cowboys feature movie they see when the playoffs start is Groundhog Day. It's just the playoffs. It's just the playoffs. It's just the playoffs. It's just the playoffs. Right? Damn. I'm going to finish this up with uh, my guy. He is just killing it. Holy shit, is he having a good year. And some of you in here, man, just don't want. Oh, well, let's get Philly Godfather on now. Holy. Oh! No! <laughs> oh, you, no! I knew you'd like that, Dan. I did. <laughs> Big week last week. Big week every week, man. We're just rolling in the dough, baby. <laughs> oh, I saw that. I love it. I love it. Man, that is good. Look at that. This guy's here to try to help you guys pay for the trees and the Tonka toys under your tree here. You see what he's doing here? He's helping you out. Take some notes. I do it for All the right. people. I do it for the people, Dan. 
That's right. Do it for the people. That's right, man. You're a giving man during this time of the year. Very good. All right. Tell me how you see this thing. I've got the Cowboys winning this game. Where do I got this? I got the Cowboys winning this ball game on Sunday. I think I said 20. I think I said 26, 24. That's how I, I, I look at them. 26, 24. How do you see this game on Sunday? Well, the look ahead line had the Cowboys a one point favorite. And then after the Eagles got blown out, they reopened the market at minus three. Moved up to three and a half uh, for like for like a New York second. It went to four. Uh, but some sharp money ended up taking the Eagles plus four. It's a great number. Um, now you look at the point differential. The Cowboys have the best point differential in the NFL this year. But when you look at the opponents they've played, there's a reason for that. Uh, their, their point differential is about a buck twenty better than the Eagles, but their opponents haven't been as good. Last time they played, I told you the game was a coin flip in Philly. Cowboys could have won that game. I think it's a coin flip this time around, to tell you the truth. Now the Cowboys are coming off with more rest. Ten days. If look, yeah, if you look at their defensive metrics, I mean, top five in almost every defensive metric, offensively top five. But the numbers are slightly skewed because of who they've played. Uh, the Eagles are still a good team. The only thing that scares me about the birds here, if you're looking to take them plus four, or plus three and a half is, and I said it before Bosa said it, I said have the 49ers given out the blueprint on how to really rock this team. All that motion in the backfield offensively, how to really put up some points. But the pass defense hasn't been good all year for the Eagles. So, you know, and like like I said, they were getting really lucky. And it's not like their luck ran out, you know, against the 49ers. The 49ers are just a much better team. But uh, the the ball ain't always going to bounce your way. I kind of I kind of like the birds a little bit, plus four, uh, if it gets there again. Uh, I think the game's a coin flip. So I, I could be cheering in the Eagles this week. Let me walk back a little bit here. Were you, were you shocked they got killed like the way they did? I mean, I thought they would lose. I didn't think they had a chance to win. But were you shocked that they got blown out like that? Well, I was betting San Fran. I was betting San Fran alternate line. I was betting all the over props for the wide receiver. I, I knew they were going to put up a ton of points against this weak Eagles pass defense. I had Purdy over 300 yards, and you were getting three to one on that prop bet. I mean, I knew they were – uh, did I think they're going to lose by 23 points, whatever it was? No. Did I think they were going to lose by maybe a touchdown or maybe anywhere from seven to 10 points? Yeah. And, uh, the 49ers just proved how good they are. You know, top five in every metric offensively, defensively, that team's just stat. Like who do you come on offense and this Eagles defense, uh, like Terrible. we said from the beginning of the year, there's a massive hole out there and, uh, you know, they've got lucky and now down the stretch, they, they really don't have to win this game. I mean, as long as they go to Seattle and they win that game and then they play the Giants, Arizona, and the Giants again. Uh, but losing this game puts a lot of pressure on them, and Seattle's healthy. And Genius you got to go there. And you got to go to Seattle. And you guys got to remember last year when this Eagles team was a lot better than they are this year, they, Arizona, they, they beat Arizona by one point. <laughs> so that's not, that's not a gimme. So, you know – I hope they win this game for all Eagles fans. If they don't, you know, I think they still win the division. I think they're still minus like 475 to win the NFC East. But are they the best team in the NFL? No. Do they have the best record in the NFL? Yes. But there's teams like the Lions, the Cowboys, 49ers, and now the Packers are getting healthy. The Packers all of a sudden are minus 250 to make the playoffs on the yes. So the odds makers are expecting the Packers to come on strong down the stretch. It's going to get real interesting last, you know, five weeks of the season. Um, I got to tell you, man, I mean, this is why I think Cowboys win on Sunday. I trust the Cowboys more at home with how well they've played at home. And I have no faith in the Eagle defense. Why should I show me one metric that gives me over the last month and a half where I don't see, and even how the Cowboys played them in game one in Philly, you know, they took them down to the wire. They couldn't get it in. Okay. And you haven't really you haven't really swept the Cowboys since I think 11, which doesn't happen. 
I mean, what, 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 get what heart and hustle and guile. And, that's great on a, on a, in a movie screen and in a, in a, in a script, but you're, you're, you're coming out of a gigantic gauntlet of teams that you have played and you're rolling into this thing, 10 days healthy. You're going on the road. I mean, could, could they beat them in January? Yes. But right now I just, I, I don't see where they have here. Dallas has to show me, but Godfather, I'm telling you, man, um, I don't believe I have lost complete faith in that defense. I don't think they could, they could stop anybody. Well, I wasn't sold on them all year. And like I said, they were getting lucky and the Cowboys at home seemed to be invincible. And it's kind of funny last year, the Eagles had scored the most first half points, I think in NFL history. And this year, the Cowboys have scored more first half points than anyone in the league. So that kind of changed. I think the Cowboys come out fast. I took the Cowboys to score a touchdown in the first drive of the game, plus 155. I like the Cowboys in the first half, minus two and a half. I think they come out strong. I think the Eagles can come back a little bit in the second half and, and maybe cover that three and a half, four point spread. Uh, but the Cowboys first half, I think, is the bet you got to make here. Let me give you some prop bets. We're kind of going over some of them. I want to revisit them with you. Devontae Smith, over under 58 and a half yards. Man, that pass defense of the Cowboys. Somebody they ran. Yeah, 51 yeah. last game. Yeah, but this uh, – against the Cowboys or the, the previous against game? Against the Cowboys. Right? Yeah, it's it's tough to go over. Uh, it's right there, Dan. I mean, I didn't make the bet. I hate giving out bets, you know, picks or selects if I didn't put money behind my wagers and, you know, my opinion. But the way that pass defense is playing – they're in Dallas. I would say under. I would say under. Jake Ferguson over under 47 and a half yards. I, I like that. him. I, I like think that. you're going to establish him. Yeah. Over 47. Yeah, I think he goes over. I think he goes over. CD Lamb over under 90 and a half yards at 191 last game. I know. I think the Eagles are really going to key on him. But that doesn't mean they can stop him. And you know like shit they keyed on him last time. Yeah. <laughs> And you, and you got the – I don't want to name his name, but you got that Eagles cornerback doing a podcast telling everyone the reason why he hasn't looked good over the last few weeks is because he hasn't been practicing and basically telling everyone he's banged up. Like, these NFL players got to stop doing these podcasts and giving away bits of information. They don't even know they're doing it. And now the rest of the league, oh, well, he's we're going to attack him. He's all banged up. We're going to go after his ass. I don't want to mention his name, but these NFL players got to stop that. They have to stop. Don't worry, he won't be around next year. <laughs> you know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. DeAndre Swift over under 50 and a half yards. They have to use him here. They got to keep that Cowboys offense off the field. They have to try to establish some type of run game, uh, or else the Cowboys are gonna blow him out. Uh I didn't bet it. I'd say over. Dallas Goddard over or under 45 and a half points. 45 coming off the forearm injury where he's been on the IR. Yeah, no, he's coming back. First game back. The, you know, the, the team played much better when he was in the lineup. He's kind of hurt the security blanket. Uh, I would say under. I would say under. Tony Pollard over or under 56 and a half. I like his over. I already bet it. I think Just, he now here we go. Over under Hurts, 235 yards passing. Last time they played the Cowboys, I gave you guys the under. Uh, people are really down on Hurts this year, but they're saying he's having an off year, bad year. But if you look at last year, the opponents they played some of the worst pass defenses in the league. This year they're playing some of the best. He's playing the same exact way he played last year. He's just playing much better pass defenses and much better opponents. Uh, that's not that's not to say he's not a you know a great quarterback that gives you so many different ways to win. I mean, fourth and one, fourth and inches, best quarterback in the NFL. I'll take him over anybody. Uh, he can use his legs. He's not really going to beat you with his arm against you know some of the better pass defenses, and it's shown. But he still can give you so many other ways to win where he makes up for that. Um, I think I think I think he goes over this time. Oh, I think he's going to have to go over. If they're gonna have a shot at winning, Prescott over under two forty five. We went over last time. What do you go three seventy five last time? Three fifty five, three seventy or something. He's like the that, MVP yeah. of the NFL right now. Love him or hate him. 
you know, you go to some of the offshore sports books that are a lot sharper than the U.S. sports books. He's the favorite to win the MVP. I think he goes over. Ooh, I like that one here. Let's do that one. Who has a better chance of winning the most valuable player award, in your opinion, Prescott or Hertz? No, Hertz is done. He ain't winning it. <laughs> he ain't winning it. No, wait, I missed that. I missed that. Can you please repeat that? He's not winning the MVP. He's not the MVP. I mean, let's be honest. Hertz is not the MVP this year. <laughs> okay. Let me get into week 14 of the season here. <laughs> yeah. I just, well, can I get one more time? What could just double check? And you said Hertz has no shot nail of winning the MVP. I love Jalen Hertz, but he is not the MVP of the NFL this year. He's got no shot. Hey, okay, and at the end, please reshow the money, man. This, this, <laughs> I, I, I want to, at the end, Rick, do it. We're giving Jam away free Atlanta money. Atlanta. The guys in the chat room are mad at me. We're giving away free money all year, and they're mad at me. I'm sorry. You I doing? know. You know what? You give free money away. I give free advice away, and they get mad at me for being right. I can't take it. I mean, it's really, it's it's kind of nauseating in a way. You know I mean? Holy cow. Okay, Atlanta's still in this thing for the – where are they right now? They're in the fourth seed now, and they got the Bucks who are kind of hanging on here. You got Atlanta? No. I'm hoping this game goes to three, and I'll take Tampa Bay plus three. Uh, they got a tough stretch here, Atlanta down the stretch. Tampa Bay's starting to get a little healthier. I like Tampa Bay here. I think I think they can win this game outright, to tell you the truth. Detroit at Chicago. Mall, what's yeah. the point spread in this thing? Three and a half, three, depending on where you shop. Three, I, I took the Bears plus three and a half. Uh, Detroit's quarterback, not that great in the cold weather. Uh, the Bears are playing some better football. I mean, look at last week's game, Detroit came out red hot, and then the Saints came right back and they almost won the game and covered the spread. And the Saints really ain't scaring nobody. Uh, you're in Chicago, tough place to play. I like the Bears plus three and a half. Ooh. Colts are right now in the sixth seed in the AFC playoff race, and they're playing Cincinnati, who's kind of still hanging in there, but not really. How about this? Stike, and if they win this game, brings that team to eight and five on the season. Has to be one of the surprise coaching jobs of the year. Yeah, and right now they're minus 200 to make the playoffs. They're, they're the hottest team in the NFL. It's the Colts, the 49ers. And the Cowboys, each three teams have won four in a row. But I think the Bengals, they showed me something. That kid uh, quarterback in that Bengals team, better than most people think. Jake Browning. Yeah, I think the, I think the Bengals cover the spread. I think it's two minus two. I, would, I like the Bengals here. I think they cover the spread. You know, Browns are in it. They're seven and five. They're in the five seed, believe it or not. And they have the Jags who are in the four seed. This would be like a playoff game right now. It would be the opening round of the wild card round if they were – this is kind of like a precursor. What do you like here? It's in Cleveland. Tough place to play. They play so much better at home than they do on the road this season. The Browns, the defense, one of the best in the NFL. Jags are all banged up. I don't know if Lawrence is playing or not. And even if he does play, what's he going to be, 60%, 65%? Not going to be mobile. That pressure rate of the Browns, one of the best in the league. Uh, game originally was Jags minus three. Now it's Browns minus two and a half, three, depending on where you shop. I like the Browns here. They're still in the playoff hunt. Odds makers are giving, uh, I think the odds are like minus 215 for them to make the playoffs. I think the Browns win this game to cover the spread. Wow. Do you care about Carolina and New Orleans? No, really. No. Okay. <laughs> How about Houston, who's in now because of Pittsburgh laying an egg last night? Houston's in the seven hole at seven and five. Great job of coaching there by D'Amico Ryans. And they're taking on the hapless Jets. And I don't know. I mean, Aaron Rodgers talk, if they win, this and that. There's a lot of people, from what I understand, are putting money on New York in this game here. Am I right when I say that or no? There's some money on it. The line's starting to drop a little bit. I'm hoping it gets to three. I'll probably be on the Texans minus three. Right now, three and a half. I'm not looking to bet the game. Even though the Texans, uh, like you said, they're seven to five. But their odds to make the playoffs is minus 400. So uh, it looks like they're <laughs> they're going to get in the playoffs. No one expected that. Great coaching job. Uh, their quarterback, one of the best young quarterbacks I've seen in a long time. 
I'm not looking to lay three and a half on a young team like that, but uh, if it gets down to three or maybe below that key number of three, I'll probably be on the Texans. Who do you think has done a better coaching job this year, D'Amico Ryans with the Texans or Steichen with the Colts? Man, I think it's a toss-up. Just flip a coin. Both guys have done an amazing job. Uh, no one expected either team to be where they're at this point in the season. Uh, the Texans, obviously, you know, that young kid is just lighting them up where the Colts – are doing it with you know with mirrors but uh i would give a slight edge to to uh the coach from the colts the la rams versus baltimore baltimore right now is in the two hole rams are sitting i think either eight or nine and they're six and six i'll tell you what mcveigh's done a pretty nice job rallying the troops uh injured really early in the season but you know stafford's kind of picked his game up and his completion percentage up which has been atrocious this year but they've been playing pretty well. Um, Rams in Baltimore. It's in Baltimore. How do you see this thing? Yeah, it's seven and a half. I'm not looking to take either side, but I did tie the Ravens into a bunch of teasers, six point teasers. Uh, I think that's the best way to bet this game. You can come down to like minus one and a half. I think they they got to win this game because they, then they play who they play. They play the Jags, San Fran, and Miami, and then they got a division game against Pittsburgh. So this is a game they really got to you know flex their muscles because it gets a little tough down the stretch for this Baltimore team. Uh, I like Baltimore and teasers. If if I mean if the game went to seven in that weather, you got the better running quarterback. You got a West Coast team, uh, but still, I don't think it'll get back to seven. It's a seven and a half. It's actually moving the wrong way. It's going towards eight. I'm not looking to bet, you know, the side, but if you can put them in a teaser, I think you make some money with Baltimore. So you're going to take Baltimore in a teaser? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Minnesota sitting in the sixth hole right now. It's six and six, and they've got the Raiders in Vegas. Um, Vikings, have you been? That's another good coaching job there, too. When they lost cousins, they've done a really nice job with that football team, too. Um, what's the odds of them making the playoffs if they win this game? Oh, probably like minus 200 to make the playoffs if they oh. win this game. Uh, the sharp money's on Minnesota this week. The game opened originally was minus one, it's up to minus three. They're starting to get a little healthier, getting some key guys back on both sides of the football here. I think Minnesota's the right side. I didn't bet the game at three. But uh, that's the right side of this game. How about this? This game's a little interesting game. Seattle and San Francisco, because it's a divisional game. San Francisco just, again, you got it's home, which favors them, obviously. But, I mean, you really, you're on a massive high right now. You're, I mean, I, I look, you're a professional, so you're going to know that it's time to put that game behind you. But this is kind of interesting here. How do you see this game? Because Seattle's got to be in a desperate mode right now. Because they're out of the playoff picture right now. Yeah, they're fighting for their lives. And they played pretty good against the Cowboys. If the ball bounced a little differently, they could have won that game. Uh, they got some extra rest. Divisional game. Both teams know each other like the back of their hand. I think 10.5 points is a little too much here, especially off a big emotional win like San Fran just had. And anytime you play you know, an Eagles team, their defensive line is one of the, still one of the best in the NFL. Your offensive line is going to be a little banged up. The following week, you're not going to perform at an optimal level. And uh, it's going to be a tough game. I think Seattle can stay within that 10.5 points. I like Seattle here plus 10.5. Now, this is an interesting game. And Osama um, McDermott um, <laughs> it, it, coaching the Buffalo Bills and versus Kansas City. I mean, dude, this is a – both teams. Oh, are, oh baby. that's an OJ. That's a, oh, that's a killer helmet, oh, Dan. That's a, ki- the juice. that's a killer helmet. <laughs> Dude, look at that thing. It's a killer helmet, man. Holy cow. That's Take the Bills. Take the Buffalo today. Bills plus one and a half. They're going to win this game. They got one of the best point differentials in the league. Uh, they, you know, The ball hasn't bounced their way all season, but they're going to win this game. They're fighting for their lives. Chiefs are a little banged up, missing some guys. Mahomes ain't 100%. I think Buffalo wins this game. Buffalo beats KC? Holy shit, that sends them to eight and five on the season. You think hey, does Kansas City make it back to the AFC title game? No. Nah. No, nah. no, I and said it, that. And if you want to get a little crazy, get back. I don't think they get back there. If you want to get a little crazy, the team that offers the most value right now to win the Super Bowl are the Buffalo Bills at 40 to 1. Now, I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl. And it's easy to say, okay, San Fran's the best. Miami's got the best record. The Ravens, they are going to get – yeah, of course. But when you look at the price, because this this is our business. It's all about price. It's all about value. At 40-1, to one, this Buffalo Bills team is a pretty good team still. The record doesn't indicate that. 
But like I said, they got one of the best point differentials in the league. They've lost every game by, you know, one score or less. The first game of the season, they lost in overtime to the Jets. This is a team that if they get their shit together, can scare some people in the playoffs. And at 40 to 1, it's a great price. You can always hedge the other side. So it, it's a it's it's like a lottery ticket that offers some value. That's all it is. Denver dropped a game last week, obviously, and they got to stay if they're going to stay in it right now because they're out of the playoff picture in the AFC and they got the Chargers, the divisional game. How do you see this thing? I think the whole world gave up on the Chargers. Oh, yeah. I gave up on their coach a long time ago. Oh, God, he sucks. He's horrible. Dude, that, you know what? To me, with, to me, the signature moment for me with him was Minnesota in a win. Remember when that? he was doing that stupid shit there, I mean – if Cousins can hear and they have, like, better better situation and communication, the Vikings win that game. Yeah. I no, mean, it just – he they've got – and they I think they got a boatload of talent in Los Angeles with the Chargers. They got to fire. They got to fire them. They got to get rid of them at the end of the season. But, uh, you know, the whole world gave up on the Chargers here. They really don't have no home field advantage. I think the whole world's going to be bent in Denver. Uh, last time I talked to my guys offshore in Costa Rica, out in Vegas in Atlantic City, they said seven out of every t- tickets early money has been on Denver. And it's probably going to get even worse by game day. I like the Chargers here. I don't think on the field goal, minus two and a half. I think the Chargers win this game. Monday night, Tennessee at Miami. Tennessee's not anything in it. Probably end up giving them a game, believe it or not. Miami right now, yeah. believe it or not, they're the number one seed in the AFC. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my son took them at 40-1 to one before the season started to win the Super Bowl, and he's, he's feeling pretty good with that ticket. Uh, they got some of the best odds to get there. Are you buying them? Yeah, they're six to one to win the Super Bowl right now behind 49ers and the Eagles. So they're the favorite in the AFC at six to one. This number's kind of high, 13 and a half. I'm not looking to bet the game here. Uh, that open 11 and a half, it's up to 13, 13 and a half. The whole world's betting Miami. I'm staying away from this one, Dan. I'm not betting that game. Green Bay at New York Giants. Now, Green Bay is in the seven hole. And help me out on this. Am I right? A lot of money's coming in on Green Bay to make the postseason because of the schedule that they have coming down the stretch. Matt LaFleur's done a heck of a job. Jordan Love looks like he's playing well. I mean, that's a hot team right now, isn't it, in the NFC? I'm not saying they're world beaters, but they're playing some pretty balanced football. They got some quality wins on the season. Right now, they're I think they're minus 230 or 250 to make the playoffs towards the yes. Uh, the rest of the schedule, the Giants, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Minnesota, and Chicago. Nobody on that, you know, scares you on that list scares you. This is a team that's a real sleeper. I think you can get them at 70 to 1 to win the whole thing. Uh, I don't think they have a shot of winning at all, but if they get in the playoffs and make some noise, you can always bet the other side and make some free money. Because this is what it's all about, making free money, making money each and every week. Uh, this is a team that's going to, you know, it's going to make some noise. At six and a half, I can't lay six and a half on this team on the road. But this is a team I think you should tie in the teasers. You can get them at minus a half with the Baltimore Ravens. So if you take the Ravens at minus one and a half and the Packers at minus a half, I think you get, you know, you cash a ticket here. Put them in a the teaser. Who do you got winning the Heisman Saturday? Who's I got the best you odds? I gave out two guys to win the Heisman before the season started. I gave out Jaden Daniels plus 1,200. So if you bet 100, you went back 1,200. And I got Marvin Harrison at 30 to 1, junior. So uh, I'm hoping one of those guys wins it. But Jaden Daniels is going to win it. And we're going to all cash. Yeah, we're all going to make money. 12 to 1 on your money. Where you, you can't get that in the stock market, in the crypto market, in any market. I'm giving you 12 to 1 dogs, and they're winning the Heisman. And people in the chat room are mad at me. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Look what he just did. All he had to do is put a C note up. You get 1200 back. And some of you guys like LJ who live in a tree hut could pay your rent. I mean, look, see, look what he's doing for you. Look at that. Look at that. Come on now, man. Holy cow. This guy's here to make a ton of money. They're they're calling me the Dallas Godfather. Just call me the money Godfather, (laughs) Dan. Hey, man, that is so dope. That is awesome. Hey, by the way, are you coming by on Saturday? Yeah, I'm going to come see you. I'll be over Oh, my God, I'm so looking forward to seeing you, man. That's Saturday, 3.30 to 5.30, KOP Hooters. Come on by there, man. We're going to have a blast out there. I got Gary Cobb coming by. Barrett Brooks is coming by. I think Seth is going to try to stick his head in there as well. So 
Um, yeah, since I'm not driving and Xander's driving me around, I might have a few cocktails and, you know, I don't know, maybe, we, may, we may work it around a little bit here. I got you covered. I got you covered. College <laughs> football, I like Florida State. I like Liberty. And both teams might win the game outright depending on uh, who's playing in those games and who's not. So watch out for Liberty and watch out for Florida State. Hey, you know what's funny that you say that? Because of these kids bowing out of these bowl games, is it harder to put a number on them things because kids bow out and well, don't play in those games? As the information enters the market, you're going to see those lines move real quick. So you're going to know right away, if you're watching a sports betting screen and you see this line start moving two, three, four, five points, well, then you know the quarterback ain't playing for that team. So pay attention to the line. Pay attention to the market. Uh, do your reading. You know, we read 10 to 12 hours each and every day. We try and get our hands on as much information as possible because we're making an educated guess. At the end of the day, we're risking 110 to 100. And if we can do better than 52.4%, we're going to make you guys some money. So. That's all it's all about. Tell the folks how they can find you so that they can make a lot of money like you have. Stop by the phillygodfather.com or follow me on Twitter at phillygodfather. And we have our show every Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, it's on Sports Grid TV, Sirius XM, Jacob Sports on YouTube. And we live stream it on my Twitter account. And I think you're going to, we're shooting a pilot for a TV show. And you're going to come on. I didn't even tell you this. I, we were talk, I was talking to Krause the other day. And you're going to be on there with us. So about oh, crazy weeks. great. Yeah, so we're going to shoot it. Crazy great. I'm looking for I can't <laughs> wait, man. Now here, yeah, it's got to make, you know, I got two Ubers lined up just in case one doesn't come by. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I, I'm working. I got, trust me, man. I've got this thing all mapped out here. So I got yeah, you covered. I, I, I can't wait to come in, dude. You got it. Hey, thanks a lot. Philly Godfather. Folks, you want to make some money? There he is right there. Look at him. Punching away. Making you money, I appreciate him. There you go. Hey, by the way, I love the fact that he said Hertz has no shot to win the MVP. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Hit the like button. We'll wrap it up. Keep it here in the National Football Show. Football and Hooters, the perfect pair. If you own a company and you're not producing a podcast, you're missing out. The public consumes messaging when they're ready. Join the professional podcast network of companies and let Jacob Media Partners put you in the podcast arena. Come to our professional studio or we'll come to your place of business and professionally produce your company podcast. Call Jacob Media right now at 267-261-3428. 267-261-3428. Any professional sports coach will tell you there's no substitution for preparation. At Malamut & Associates, that is a tenet by which we live. We prepare from day one for victory. Anything less is not acceptable. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. G.A.
Yeah, don't you dare worry. I'm getting me a cheesesteak. Dude, nobody comes to Philly and doesn't have a cheesesteak. Give a shit who you are. It's like like going to Italy and not having spaghetti or pizza. Hey, I'll take a um, vanilla cream pie and soup. No, I want spaghetti and a pizza. By the way, when I was in Europe... And I ate pizza, and it was a Sicilian pizza. It was like vomit in the middle. I'm like, that's not Sicilian pizza, guy. That's that's not a Sicilian pizza. I know what a Sicilian pizza is. Okay, that and and that ain't it. (laughs) Okay, scores from you guys, Delisandros. I'm gonna definitely. It's going to be um, a trip over there. Hey, by the way, real quick before we get out of here, man. Hertz, Lane Johnson, Kelsey, Dickerson, Malata, A.J. Brown, Reddick, and Jordan Davis. I cast my votes for a Sporting News All Pro te- or a Pro Bowl team. Sporting News Pro Bowl. I put Hertz, Lane Johnson, Kelsey, Dickerson, Malata, Brown, Reddick, Jordan Davis. Anybody I miss? Anybody I miss? Would you put anybody else in there? I got Kelsey, Johnson, Hertz, Mulata, Brown, Reddick, Davis. Um, okay. I've got 26-24. Dallas Cowboys. Fourth quarter football game. Um, I don't think Jalen Carter's been your best D tackle. I think your best D tackle has been Fletcher Cox. I think he had a really strong start. And um, I think Fletcher has been your best DT. I think he's going to be on the all-rookie team for sure. But um, I I think Fletcher Cox has been your best. I think he's been your best defensive tackle over 12 games. So, I mean, that's how I see it. Guys, I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing some of you tomorrow, 3.30 to 5.30 at the KOP Hooters. We're going to have a ton of people out there. By the way, we got... Um, Eagle tickets, Eagle jerseys, a lot of merch. We look forward to it. Thank you so much. Monday, 2 to 6. Xander, Joe, thank you. I look forward to seeing you guys. And Tone, had a great week, man. Uh, Through some adversity, guy came out punching, man. He was just kicking ass this all week, man. I really appreciate him. God bless to him and his family. Thank you so much for all you do for the show, Tone. We really love you very much. And we shall see you on Monday, 2 to 6, and we'll see you on the flip flip side. Ball and Hooters, the perfect pair.